Happy Cinco de Mayo. No, it's the it's the Cinco the Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I every year you make that fucking joke, and every yes. year I think about coming back over to your apartment, moving in, and slowly poisoning you with arsenic, just so I don't have to hear that <laughs> fucking joke next year. <laughs> we commemorate the destruction of a large uh, French supply vessel filled with yes. egg yolks and oil yes. today, which turned the tide of the war as yes. French soldiers were unable yes. to. Uh, continue the battle without their uh uh-huh, with uh-huh. with such dry flavorless sandwiches when you do is, this it makes me so mad <laughs> which is why we call it the cinco de mayo that is what we do yeah mm-hmm. all right um great uh mexican hello. independence day is what september the 6th oh, so this is the battle of puebla right yes 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 it is yeah, you just go go look at Google Maps at any town in Mexico, and it'll be like Aveno, Avenue, and then Aveno? some date, Aveno, <laughs> Aveno. <laughs> Aveno September sixteenth. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're yeah, doing sure. cross cultural dialogue here. Uh, I, badly, we're doing it very badly. badly yes, uh-huh. <laughs> we are. Um, uh, well, you know, I, I, what can you say other than you know we have the best taco bowls here? Well, there's your problem. <laughs> Um, I love his. We had an excellent Mexican guest to talk about a Mexican yeah, disaster. You yeah, literally, <laughs> you dickhead. <laughs> Sorry, Emma. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize. Yeah, 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 I I will say, uh, I think it would be very funny to do a live show from Mexico City. Of yes, I really I want to do that. Intensely I'd love to do to that too. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, I have friends who have been to Mexico City. I love. Uh, well, I was in San Diego last year, and I was just like, "All right, now what we need to do is simply launch ourselves, order the over the fence, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, and we will be." You know what was so funny? You, there was you no have one on an the American Americans. passport. Yeah, but this, but my you, the you guy don't have I was to with do it illegally. I, 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 would you let me fucking finish my story? And it was so funny because in the on the American side, it's like it's a park. It's like yeah, here's the border. Like fuck you. Uh, mm. And on the Mexico side, there's a bunch of people hanging out and playing music and just living life. And I'm like, I want to be in Mexico. I want to go. I want to go to there. It's a better country. I believe that truly. And I would love Mexico to do a CDMX show. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. All right. Well, now that we've insulted our listeners, uh, yes. Happy <laughs> also, the thing is, if you, if you do a show in in Mexico City for a, a, like an American British podcast in English, you're gonna get an audience of like all of the tech people who moved to Mexico City because it was cheaper speak hardly any Spanish and who everyone else in Mexico City hates we, um, we will we will uh, fill Stadia, uh, Stadia what is it Stadia Azteco <laughs> yeah, yeah. Azteca, <laughs> sure. Stadia yeah. Azteca the, 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 the big one I don't know right. doing great doing great uh, Sorry, pay for like I, live live Spanish interpreters as, you know? yeah, as text, Estadio Azteca I was not that far off I was just amused at the thought of us filling like any stadium for any reason. Yes, WTYP Stadium Tour opening for Luke Bryan for some reason. <laughs> uh, h- hello and welcome to Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides and linguistic I'm, disasters and, and yes. cultural disasters. <laughs> yes, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. All right, go. Me llamo Alice Caldwell Kelly, uh, my pronouns are she and her. And I, I guess, what are she and her in Spanish? Fucking... Not a damn clue, but I no, studied okay, French. Okay, fine, whatever. Je me Liam. Liam. Viva <laughs> Liam. Yay, like the Viva Liam. Yay, Liam. Viva Liam. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm William Anderson, my pronouns are he and him. And what's very funny is that my fiance is on a work call right now, but I didn't shut my door, so... Hmm, probably Oops. get up and do that. No, not yeah. doing it. Okay. She can shut the oh. door. <laughs> We're we're so good at this. After what, like, what feels like eight years of doing this, and has right. probably been like one. Um, I, I, it's been two or three, actually. I think. God, I think we're um, on year three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, what's crazy is that we haven't gotten any better at it. Um, no, no. If anything, yeah, worse. Worse. Yeah. Worse. Arguably, you know what's funny is I was I was volunteering at the food bank uh, Thursday, which is why I couldn't record, mm. and uh, I was talking to the we'll we'll discuss details but uh there will be some sort of fundraiser that we're going to do for uh Lutheran Settlement House okay. uh because uh yeah they need money and we are a good place to bully our listeners uh into That's giving true. them money 
That's true. Uh, and she was like, oh, that's like so exciting. Like, I, I would love to listen to your podcast. And I'm just like, no, you fucking wouldn't. I promise you, <laughs> you wouldn't. And like, Corinne's manager was like, oh, what's this podcast about? Like, I'll definitely check it out. Which sounds, it's like, I cannot emphasize enough. Do not listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give us your money and then just leave it at like 30% volume while you work as the, you know, like live in cesspit security guard, you know? Yeah. I will say the people do love uh, the, the, the bonus episode on the poop plane. Oh, well, Thank I'm you. so glad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about uh, my beloved city of Boston, Massachusetts, and why yeah, they're I, bad at shit. This is, this is uh, a rather innocuous picture, you know, and that doesn't look a lot like the. No, I did not take this. Oh, because we've this been over. to this exact station. Yeah, we have been to this station. Um, but the uh, this this rather innocuous uh, innocuous looking photo is actually masking, I think, one of the worst public transit disasters of the twenty first century. The automobile. They were going to talk about Boston's Silver Line. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It's a public transit. Uh, it's it's yes. it's a it's a trolley bus episode i think that's a uh, yes. form of transit we've never done oh uh, it's only partly a trolley bus though oh my god yeah <laughs> okay it's it, it's a lot of things it's a it's a, it's a we'll, cesspit yes lots of dreams okay yeah yes liam close your door oh fuck me okay one second <laughs> incredible <laughs> no because i knew dev would kill me if i didn't say get up and close your door right now um, this is the thing. This we've we've been sort of like um, the sole drive towards professionalism. The sole thing that has gotten better is our editor Devon. Pronouns they them. Hi Devon. Yes. Hi Dev. Hi Dev. Uh, my my beloved colleague and inserter of sandwiches into our slideshows. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, but before we talk about the silver line, we have to do the goddamn news. <laughs> Oh man, jarring shift in tone. Um, I was about to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, that is a jarring shift in tone. We, we were having a nice time, and then we had to be reminded of uh, one of the latest in a series of horrible things that happened. Collapse of society. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, I, 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 can I just take this one? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go uh, ahead. So Jordan Neely, who is a homeless man, not that it fucking matters, mm-hmm. uh, was choked to death by a 24-year-old uh, Marine veteran. Uh, I do we have the 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 Marines name because we yeah should Daniel Penny um, yeah we should fucking say it I, I'm not uh, sure if like it, it's something the the media have been very hesitant to say I'm not sure why I can't imagine a real liability issue yeah, yeah I do know why. why but we we should say it so yeah as, as yeah. far as anyone knows his name is Daniel Penny um yeah. so this is Jordan Neely who is a subway performer who was having what I can't even describe as a psychotic episode more close no. to a he was just uh, having a bad time. He was having like, a bad day, and he died for it. And hmm. I, I want to talk about mental health. I want to talk about the fact that I, as at this point, by any conceivable standard of world health, am very, you know, I am, I am in a position where I can afford my medications. Um, I do struggle with hallucinations and psychoses, and I am not. It is not lost on me. Not to make it about me that I am, I am at any given point two weeks away from this happening to me as well. Although I'm white, so. We all know why this happened. Um, yeah. It's that people believe now that they should be able to kill people who bother them with impunity, uh, especially black people. It's fucking gruesome. It's fucking evil. Uh, you are. I, I, I do want to say to our listeners, uh, not to pat you people on the back because you disgust me. You are better than this. Uh, if you see something like this, you absolutely fucking intervene, even if it comes at a danger to yourself. Uh, to prevent yeah. some some well, guy from dying on the subway for no fucking reason. This Absolutely was a, a straight up prolonged murder over the course right. of about fifteen minutes in full public view. Nobody did shit other than to assist its commission. Right. Um, I, 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 I thought I, from one of the pictures that at least someone tried to intervene. No, they were they were they were not helping. They were helping oh. uh, restrain him. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and and if you're a marine, you enter a chokehold knowing that your intent is to kill someone. Yeah, absolutely. And and especially to hold it for like anything longer than fucking a minute, let alone 15. And right. the other thing I think is, I, I think about this in terms of the way everyone talks about San Francisco, for instance, where, for instance, we had a, a guy who was uh, attacked by a homeless person and then it emerged 
at trial that he had just been walking around macing homeless people, including the guy yes. who attacked him, uh, unprovoked, totally unprovoked, and like walking away from it. And I, I, I feel like <sighs> there is a, like this sadistic element in every city in America that that wants to to do this, and then a much larger element that's like, not only do they have a right to do this, but I have a right never to be frightened or affronted right. in any way and the penalty right. for those things is death right right exactly. and it's like that's that's then, that is no way for anyone to live no, and then you I'm, have the thing going on now where people are just shooting people for ringing their doorbells right exactly you know, yeah, you know, I, incredibly I fucked up too. Just, that's absolutely <laughs> fucking absurd uh, i i i cannot emphasize enough that you will be uncomfortable in society that is the price you pay fucking live with it you're gonna be all yeah. right. We're all gonna be all right. Fucking live with it. To learn to yeah. control yourself. <laughs> learn to control. It's not that fucking hard. Like I, we found some junk files. Thank you, C. Cleaner. Oh really. God. I'm trying to get really rid of that thing. Really delivering. I'm trying to get rid of that here. thing. It won't mm. go away. But, I know. The, oh. I should also say about the 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 photo here. The the guy that he killed, Neely, was like a, a by all accounts extremely talented dancer and michael jackson impersonator right and, um, yes. and we'll never know the the fruits of his life because yeah yeah was, was like widely yeah. beloved his whole like this whole community of impersonators and dancers was like out looking for him for years because he just dropped off the map after by the way his mother was murdered by his stepfather and he had to like give evidence against him face to face in court i mean right. it's a nightmare scenario that also, like yeah uh, uh, I want to say one specific thing. If if I hear any fucking thing, one more thing about, oh, he's been arrested 43 times. Yeah, it's illegal to be homeless. Shut the mm -hmm. fuck up. And it doesn't yeah. deprive a man of his right to dignity in life. No, and like, it, the, it never will. Any, I, any, I, I anything, don't really get yeah. emotional on the show anymore, like mm -hmm. I said, but this one just hit me in the gut. I just, I really struggle with the fact that people can be this evil. People can be this, you know, I don't give mm -hmm. a shit that I'm watching a man be murdered in front of me. Uh, I, I, I do say, and I, I will say it again, and I'll say it a million fucking times, it is your duty as a human being to hurt people. Yeah. The penalty yeah, sorry, for sorry. any of this shit, uh, like assault, anything like that, the penalty is not and should not be, uh, you are killed by a vigilante. No, um, and it yeah. is a vigilante. It's, it, it's fully like it's, this, the sign of like social fabric being like deliberately unwound, ripped apart right, by... Right political decisions this is like you know i mean fucking in the 80s you have bernard Getz like right. shoot four people for like maybe attempting to rob him maybe right. just trying and to talk to him and we're just we're, we're back again right exactly yeah. that that was the same thought i had and it's just like i i i very rarely come to tears on the show obviously i've done it about paul but i just i i i've seen a lot of gruesome shit in my life mm -hmm. i've seen a lot of gruesome shit on this show but i just you absolutely fucking unbelievable um totally fucking needless the guy who killed him is an evil fucking heinous human being and i'll pay for mm -hmm. it in the gates of hell if there is one mm. is the guy being prosecuted we they're discussing it um no, they, they, have, no, he's they not haven't going arrested to him they've like they have they've uh like interviewed well, eric, him and then eric adams is pleading for patience and to which i say uh and dev you'll have to bleep this um <laughs> mayor adams I mean, it's worse than that because Kathy Hochul said, well, her uh, statement, she, and then she revised it. It was pure fucking. Her first statement was like, th "This is, you know, uh, it's bad or whatever." But actions, have, actions consequences. have consequences. Yeah. And I just, I can't put myself in the mindset of like someone who who would write that about this. I, no. It doesn't seem like we're even living on the same planet. Like I don't. No. I, <sighs> no. Um. I, I just I don't see the purpose in going out and being that angry. And I'm I'm a pretty pissed off person, but like I uh, if you if you're that unwilling to live in society, I implore you to go out in the mountains and then just live there and shut the fuck mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Well, it's part of this but, like constructed narrative, right? That our inner cities are incredibly dangerous. People are lurking yeah, so around every because corner. Because of vigilante to, violence. Yeah, people yeah, are lurking yeah. around every <laughs> corner to steal your television um you know and and it's all made up it's all fake like three quarters of the stuff you hear about crime in the cities is like they made it up on local news because they didn't have anything else to talk about please, but please, you know please, it yeah, and, and also, and also like this if, if you're worried about violent crime you should be worried that the people who are most likely to be victimized by it are people like this like yes. right. the, the, the people who are most likely to suffer from violent crime are the same people you are worried about committing it to you. Um, and right. there's like... <sighs> and 
and my I, thing is my thing is i get being uncomfortable on the subway i or sure. specifically on the l right now just because uh it's a it's a lawless uh a social shithole uh because they fucking like all i'm saying is don't smoke on the fucking cars stop mm, smoking yeah. on the fucking cars but like if I, a homeless person or someone in need asks me for money if i have cash i just give it to them it's yeah not like that. i'm 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 not going to be that i'm a man yeah. i understand that there's you know there's uh there's that in play but like i and i understand that i'm also like a big boy and i can defend myself mm. like yeah, I you that that even if you're well, uncomfortable, you just get off the fucking just get off the fucking subway. Well, here, here's the thing, right? I'm 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 not going to be one of those people who like says that you know these things are like nice or that they're good places to be or that people's fear isn't real, right? Um, right. It, it's it's not that, and I think the thing is, if you are afraid in these situations, it's that you should like understand that that is happening because of a political system that creates that puts people in those situations and whose only response is more violence and like more tension instead of less uh in a way that really exacerbates it and does nothing to help but what really strikes me is uh you know i mean i'm a trans woman right i'm fucking terrified all the time in public but the the, the threshold for violence for a lot of these people when they respond with it is i i mean it's nothing it's absolutely nothing a guy yelled at you one time maybe he threw something near you that that is right. absolutely nothing and it's always the people who are who have least reason to be threatened right. i mean like it's the same with the shootings it's like if you are armed if you are carrying a firearm on you there is a high threshold for what makes it acceptable for you to like ever feel like your life is in danger um yes <laughs> And it, it, but it's just a hair trigger with these people, and it's because so everything say. in the culture is like convincing them that they're about to be the killed right, right, by exactly. by like this guy who was in Antifa and who was gonna like inject vaccines into you to make you gay or whatever the fuck. Yes, like right. <sighs> you're pure fucking evil. That's the only yes. word for it. Yeah, absolutely. People gotta you know grow a backbone. People you gotta have a thicker skin. You gotta like not let you know. I I I. I you can't be on these sorts of, you know, hair triggers like this. It's like, no. it's it's just stupid. It's it's a stupid way to live You're your life. Absolutely right. It's miserable. <laughs> yeah, and you again, uh, not to put too fine to put on it. Like, if, if that's your freaking first reaction to some guy throwing his coat down, uh, I don't know what to tell you other than uh, you fucking get a grip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you, yeah, you, like you don't have any ability to like just de-escalate this. Right. Not in a way that you had to be trained to do it, but just as a fucking human being, right? You know, exactly. like <sighs> and like the reason I, why the reason why he was having a bad time was because he was starving, right? And he hadn't right. he didn't have anything to eat. He didn't have anything to drink. Uh, and the system and, and he is was starving like, these people on purpose. The, the state yeah, is yeah, starving yeah. these people on purpose, and I, I want sure. to escalate. That. And I I, I want to. Talk about one thing that 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 kind of deeply affected me since we're all using this as group therapy now, um, <laughs> which is that yesterday I was working, like I said, at the food pantry, and we had we were down to our last few eggplants. Um, we didn't get uh, the chicken, the canned food that we normally get because COVID's over, and therefore people aren't starving anymore. Sure. So this is this is me telling you right now to donate to your local food bank, or I'll come to your house and beat <laughs> shoes. And I. Uh, I, a woman, an elderly woman, was talking to her her granddaughter. She comes to me and she says, "How many? We we had unlimited apples for the day because we had like six cases of apples." And this woman crossed herself when I told her, "Sorry," when I told her how many she could take, and it was just like, "That's the fucking baseline." Like, mm. that's like you owe dignity and respect to your fellow human being. People don't deserve to be choked out on the fucking subway for having a bad day. People deserve to have a fucking food, to have fucking food, to have a fucking roof over their heads. We're going to do everything in our powers of podcast to like help Lutheran settlement house. I'm just tired of watching society degrade to a point where like this kid's looking for her lost kitten and you think you're going to what shoot the child mm -hmm. because you're such a fucking tough guy. Like shut the fuck, just shut the fuck up with that. Mm hmm. And I don't, right, I don't sorry, know I how it. There. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I don't know how, like, we go from here, other than to help each other. No, but I don't, exactly, we can only help each other. And if you see someone being strangled to death on the subway, it is your 
I can't believe I have to say this. It's your duty as a human being to a uh, guy who's doing the choke hold enough times until he gets the point. Mm. Yeah, or at least say, hey, cut that out. Stop you know? fucking doing that. I would yeah. like to not witness a murder yeah. on my community at home, please. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You fucking dickhead. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Jordan well, Neely. Uh, that's his name. And he deserved a lot better than he fucking got. Yeah. We all do. Yeah. All right, what's next now that I've cried well, openly yeah, in, on this podcast? Yeah, in other news. <laughs> false flag. False flag. I'm going false full fl- conspiracy theories. It's a false flag. Come on now. It's I a watched, false flag. I, I watched the video of this. This is the Kremlin got donked by this drone, and it mm. just sort of like passes by one of the domes on one of the buildings, and it kind of... You know, yeah, it just it kind of just up. runs into it. Like, I don't, Russian media is like, this is an assassination attempt. No, yeah, it's it, not. It, like, no, down there hit the flagpole on top of that's the Senate House there. Um, these are the guys, it, it missed. These are the, these are the <laughs> yeah. guys that put that bomb in that statue of the guy and then gave it to the guy. Oh, the, you the, think like, that assassination yeah. thing? You think yeah. they're going to be this fucking unprecise trying to take out Vladimir Putin? No, yeah, this yeah, yeah. is a P- false Putin, flag. Putin wasn't Come even on. in the Kremlin. I don't yeah. think that makes it a false flag exactly. I think it puts the lie to... I mean, yeah, Russia is, of course, saying, oh, this is the US, and it's like, no, the US would do better. Come on. Um, yeah, we'd send, a, peace, say, we'd send, a, we'd send a, a peacekeeper through your fucking mailbox. <laughs> yeah. Come I, find I, out why we don't have free healthcare. This is like <laughs> a lame... I, it's like a lame firecracker is what it looked like. I, I don't know. I... Yeah, I mean, honestly, this this to me smacks of like some guy, right? Like because Just a douche. <laughs> Just no, Ivan. no way. Like <laughs> Russian Russian air defense. Air defense is something Russians are pretty good at. I guess not directly here, but like this isn't something you want to fly from Ukraine. This is something no, you want to like what, launch that's what they close. Said, the, the, and, like, the, right, exactly. I um, I'll buy your some guy theory like a dissident or something. Yeah, it was just the, like, the, fuck the, it, the like, reason, yeah, like Prigozhin or something. The the reason why I don't think it's a false flag in in the sense of like the Russian government doing it is because it makes the Russian government look dumb as hell and they're panicking. Yeah. Um, right now in Moscow, they have like they're spoofing all of the GPS. GPS so, signal. I saw that. Yeah, you can't use one of those little like um uh, like rental bikes because the GPS thing thinks that it's outside of Moscow now. You can't get a cab because the map says that all of the cabs are in those the river. Are the river? I saw that. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Yeah. All right. So, well, congratulations. Welcome to our new our new uh, taxi boat fleet. Uh, but by accident. <laughs> yeah. well, the, the joke that I made on Twitter was that the special military operation is going so well that we're training the Moscow taxi drivers to have an amphibious landing capability. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gonna gonna come in handy, but this is of, of course all in the, in the the lead up to uh, Victory Day, May the 9th, um, where there ordinarily would be a, a the massive parade through Red Square with the military. That's going to be closed to the public. Um, the Russians also do this thing called the Immortal Regiment, which is actually a pretty cool idea. Which is where you like walk around with a like a a portrait of your ancestor who died in the war. Uh, and the reason why they they cancelled that, the thinking is, is because there will be a lot of people walking around with like very recent photos, and yes. that would sort of like lead to some questions, you know. Um, so yeah, right now Russia is like sort of uh, e- extremely paranoid about this, but also they have no meaningful way to escalate other than uh, like the real psycho shit, which I still don't think they're going to do. So it's it, there's going to be a lot of sound and fury about how oh we're going to take the fucking gloves off. But like they don't have any gloves left. I was about right. to say, yeah, they've been taking off layers and layers of gloves, and now you're down to, okay, are we going to nuke someone? I don't yeah. think we're going to yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Uh, yeah, tell the the weird guy pretending to be the 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 uh, air command that we're not going to do that. Fucking. Well, Prig- Prigozhin said that they're taking Wagner out of um out of Bakhmut um because they don't have ammunition for them. I I don't know if that's true or not, or whether he's going to stand by it or not, but the sort of, the, the power struggle going on between Prigozhin uh, and Shoigu and Garasimov is, is like, that's uh, interesting. I'm not sure which, which way that's going to go, other than to view it as a kind of like, all of these guys are fighting to be the first one on top when Putin dies, whenever that is. Um, never, never. I, he's absolutely immortal. Mm. There's no way Any more not. clever assassination attempt, you know, I mean, you know, this is kind he's of boring. Oh yeah. What you gotta do is like find it. Does is there anything that like Putin likes? Does he have like hobbies? Judo. Yeah, judo. He judo, likes which judo. He's yeah. good at it, right? Okay. Yeah, he's he's like a pretty good judoka. Uh, he's pretty good at like uh, fishing as well. Um, okay. Semtex fish. 
Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, the only thing I really know about Vladimir Putin's uh, martial arts is that Benjamin fucking Wittis like disputes it because he's like, there's no video of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've seen video of, of, of Putin doing judo, but like, I the, just the, think that's that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. Like, yeah. like you, t- like you fucking like a lawfare blog or whatever, just being like the truth about Vladimir Putin's judo qualifications unmasked. So it's still like Trump has small hands, you know. It's like he didn't. Uh, we're gonna try and make him like insecure about this, and it's like no, yeah. this is just a thing he just straight up does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the, this speaks very poorly for Russia's prospects post Putin, which I am led to believe will happen some year or another. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, worry about it then. In the meantime, um, the the counteroffensive is coming, sort of like probably. Two weeks, if we're lucky, um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, assuming, assuming no sort of like um, reservist E twos in the US uh, aren't leaking shit to their Discord. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in other news, all right, we got to talk about the mayor election. Um, no, Philadelphia, welcome, welcome to only city in the, the world. Phil- yeah, the Stop only, the only important, this. the only important city. Stop making um, me do this. So this is what happened: is they just a lot of people decided to run for mayor, and almost all of them are bad. Yeah. Um, most of them are identical. Um, I, I can but, see that there's a disparity here in the sort of like quality of the pictures people send. Yeah, Jimmy the, the, DeLeon sent a very the low Leon resolution, is very very yeah. pixelated here. Uh, Delsha um, Gray has like about four pixels in her hair, which I don't she's think also is the way a her hair is. As look. far as ah, I know, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, the only candidates you should legitimately consider voting for are Jeff Brown and Alan Dom. Uh, uh, next section, no, please. No, next segment, no, please. Next no. segment, please. Um, uh, Helen Gim, right. Rebecca Reinhardt, they're basically identical. Those, those, are, those are basically the two candidates to vote for. Of course, you know we have two progressive candidates to split the vote so that Alan Dom wins. Nah, or, Dom's not going to win. <laughs> um, uh, he's or Jeff pulling Brown. It. Yeah. Jeff Brown is, is busy suicide bombing himself out of the race. I, uh, you know, I, 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 I strap I, me to a missile and fire me yeah. at the Kremlin. Yeah. Um, the office of the mayor of Philadelphia has historically, at least as long as I lived here, been uh, the, he's the guy who takes orders from Daryl Clark, um, city council <laughs> president. Um, but you know, uh, the thing is that um, uh, what Daryl Clark is retiring next year, so the yeah, office allegedly. of the mayor might actually allegedly. mean something. Well, he's do not you on have your own ballot. Putin. Yeah, we do have our own Putin. I fucking hate Daryl Clark. <laughs> um, well, the funny thing is, I guess, uh, I guess the the part there only one person ran. A bunch of people tried to run to replace him, but uh, the one guy who was supposed to be sort of coronated as his successor. Uh, got lazy, didn't get enough signatures, and is yep. not on the ballot. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, that, that live, kind of like in, complacency yeah, works very well for us. I mean, that's how AOC got elected. Like, and uh, I, I think the one guy who is running to replace him is extremely homophobic, um, cool. which is a hell of a strategy for a Democrat in uh, 2023. Um, in, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like major city, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I, I understand that you have homosexuality in Philadelphia. They made a whole movie about it with Tom Hanks. Like yeah, I yeah. So we have the Gaberhood. <laughs> yeah. And you can go to Voyeur if you want, or you can be an idiot. What's the bar I hate, Roz? Uh that's a lot of bars. Are, you gonna, are we rating Liam Gay bars here? Like uh, what's the yeah, yeah. what's the I have to go to Google Maps. I have to do this on the show because Roz doesn't know the name of the bar. Are you talking about Hal at the Moon? No, no, I hate okay. Hell at the Moon too, but for entirely different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one on 12th, the, the Woody's. Woody's. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it was owned by a fucking racist. Yeah, I mean, that's, I that's really your that. options. Are we going to have the, the homophobic guy? You want a racist guy? But there's no yeah, racist and come. homophobic guy. Oh, I'm sure we could, <laughs> we could come up with one. We could probably come up with one, yeah. Uh, that's progress, uh, you know. That's incremental progress. This is where liberalism has gotten us. You split the vote enough times, you get like you can get a guy who's racist, you can get a guy who's homophobic, but not both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a real, it's yeah. a real tragedy. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so wait, again, wait, wait. But, I recognize a name here too because I remember a, a little, a sort of a bet noir here. I remember you bitching about David O before. 
Yeah, yeah. he's the one Republican running. Uh, he is going to lose by 900 million points. He gave up his yeah. seat on city council, the safest seat uh, in the city to, to yes, run. Because uh, uh, there, it, the, it's mandated in the city charter that there had to be two non-Democrats on city council, and he was one of them. Uh, <laughs> the other one is um, uh, uh, still a leftist, though. <laughs> yeah, the other one's uh, Working Families Party. Working um, Families, there we go. Yeah. Uh, then we have Jeff Brown here. He is uh, he he runs what Shoprite? Shoprite and wants he's to bring in, a sort of uh, brand of from... local regional grocery store chain fascism to uh, Philadelphia. Oh, one um, of those I... guys. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Real, real piece of shit. He has no yeah. chance. Uh, Alan Dom is a real estate developer who went to American University. Uh, he has profited as real estate developer despite being on city council because we live in a shithole city. Uh, no, Amon Brown owed thirty thousand dollars in taxes and is a kind of a skeevy dude. Uh, Sherelle Parker's a cop. Uh, what else we got? Uh, yeah, that's uh, basically Delsha it. Gray's a cop. That's yeah. There's so many cops. Yeah. Well, Sherelle Parker is actually at city. Is she on city council? Well, she resigned her seat, right? But she was. You, you do have to. You do have to resign your seat to run, which is not a not a great system. Yeah, she was. From, she was on city council. Uh. Uh, but she's not now, and she wants to hire a bunch more cops. I will say so, uh, mm. to to hold my own candidate responsible. Uh, Rebecca Reinhardt's first ad that I ever saw was her at K and A, surrounded by homeless people and and people in active addiction, and it was just like this: stop fucking using people in shitty circumstances to propagate to perpetuate mm. your bid for for mayor. That's a bad and evil thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, Helen Gim may have done some opiate uh, uh, profiteering, but yeah, she is, yeah. as of now, the consensus uh, socialist progressive candidate. Unless you're me. Yeah, unless you're Liam, uh, <laughs> who is going to vote for the Elizabeth Warren of this race. Yep. Um, so, so Elizabeth so, Warren so, was a better so, candidate than Bernie. I'll die on that hell. Oh, so God. Vote- yeah, oh you ready for God, that one? Yeah, you ready no. for that one? Let's relitigate oh, 2016. Yeah, let's do it. Seven years <laughs> later, let's do it. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker! So, 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 vote again unless you're Liam. <laughs> yeah, and then vote Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah I, um, I will. I am split. I am genuinely split dead even between the two. It'll just be what my gut tells me. Helen Gim would be a, a perfectly good mayor. I, I tend to like Reinhardt a little bit better, but I think that uh, Helen Gim also opened a charter school, which I really don't like. Weird, and, and yeah. I view as very hypocritical now. Uh, but I also understand that people evolve and, uh, you know, I think you, 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 you'd be in good hands with either Gim or Reinhardt. I just, I do think that we should talk about the 2016 election. I'm voting with the big block. I'm hoping we can turn the socialist progressive movement in Philly into a sort of Tammany Hall type situation. Yeah, hopefully without I'm just going to yeah. vote as, I'm going to vote as ordered. And I'm not going to think about it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're going to you know, come back. You're going to put on a fake beard. You're going to vote again. You're going to yeah, come back. You're going to put on a beard. fake mustache. You're going to vote a third time. Yeah, like... I, I will say, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to call him out right now. Uh, don't listen to a goddamn thing Philly DSA has to say. <laughs> Keep that in the fucking episode. Bold it. <laughs> oh, here I, I, was don't, I don't know shit recommend. about Philly DSA. So I'm like, uh, whatever. Uh, here they're, I was about to recommend uh, Mindy Esther's um, uh, voting guide. Um, <laughs> you can listen to Mindy; she's nice. So, but uh, Philly DSA as a whole thing, is our landlord stooges. Yeah. So, uh, 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 another thing that I would say about the election is you're going to look at the ballot. There's going to be this whole long list of judges you have to vote for. Don't worry, you none don't of know us anything. <laughs> you don't know anything about them. Or what they do. They're all corrupt. Or, Don't worry about uh, it. I was just going to say, if you need a reason to vote for one of them, um, there's a friend of a friend, Jessica Brown, running for judge. Vote for her because you have one reason to now. <laughs> 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 Which is your oh, pals she's... on the podcast know her through a friend. <laughs> is she is she good? Is she a good judge? I believe so. She worked for the cool. Department of Labor, which was actually yeah. pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. Okay. And she yeah. was a union lawyer. So, yeah, she's ah, all right. Ah, union thugs. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got yeah. a union thug here. She does <laughs> She she does enjoy running for recreation, which gives me pause. Mm, oh, psycho I, shit. I, that is, like, of course, yeah. sociopathic yeah. behavior. Get a bicycle. Yeah. Get a bicycle. <laughs> it's Most so much efficient easier means of locomotive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she went to Temple, and I... I by and large, appreciated Temple alum, unless they're Bill Cosby. So, so like critical support, yeah, for Jessica Brown for judge. 
Uh, Gim or Reinhardt for mayor. Yeah, um, probably, honestly, yeah. probably Gim. I'm, yeah. you know, Reinhardt's fine too. Yeah, Gim's got the the Bernie endorsement now, and the uh, yeah, yeah, who else? Know. Um, whole big, whole big slew. Yeah, of a lot. There's a lot of people around. coalescing around her. Yeah, yeah, she's she's good again. Her her opioid profiteering gives me some pause as mm-hmm. somebody who has yeah. recovered from opioid addiction. But that's my <laughs> hang up, not yours. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. All right. Alternatively, let's... you could vote for Alan Dom. Do not vote for Alan Dom I, again. <laughs> I will come to your house and beat you with your own shoes. The existence of an Alan Dom implies the existence of an Alan Sub. That's a good point. Yeah. <sighs> More like Alan Dumb. Dom. We should get to the subject of the episode. Thirty-seven minutes <laughs> in. <laughs> yes. This is not. Is this bot? This isn't Boston. This is not. Is this is not Boston. <laughs> is but not I wanted Boston. to discuss. <laughs> I wanted to discuss. City. Yeah. No, this is several cities. Because I wanted to start here by talking about a transportation concept, mm. which is the pre-war elevated railroad, uh, the L. Right. It's a cool idea. Um, Have a train yeah, rattle right a, past your windows. Yeah, what? A, yeah, exactly. As people can look in and see what you're doing, but you can look uh-huh. out and see what they're doing. Yeah. Um, you can all spy on each other. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, question: Why do you elevate a railroad? Because there's already a road under it, and you want to like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the road's full of horses and streetcars. Everything's slow. There's carts everywhere, right? You having to like, You're... you have to get like cowboys to run in front of the locomotive to like clear all the shit away from it. Like, yeah, which means sure. you can't go very fast, right? You know, mm. you can't stop for the horses, and if you can't stop for the horses, then you run them over, and then you got to clean the horse viscera off the train, right? Right, <laughs> and that's very expensive and time consuming. So you, yeah. you elevate the railroad, right? Very hard to get um, a horse up onto an elevated railroad. Uh, I actually have a question about elevating the railroads. Do they do this? I know that some transit systems were built with freight in mind. Is that another consideration? Or some, no, we're some just of talking the L's, about... Some of the L's did carry freight. Notably, the Chicago L carried right. freight until 1972. Um, was that a consideration in elevating them or no? Uh, it was one of the considerations, okay. but it was not like the primary not one. The primary. Um, okay. Yeah. It was initially for rapid transit. Yeah. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these, uh, pre-war L's they're on these, they have a few things in common. They're on these sort of spindly, you know, steel structures, right. Mm. Uh, with wooden ties directly on the girders. Um, Are these even steel on the top right here? They look like wrought iron. Like, um, that was probably steel. Yeah. Um, okay. you know, but back then, uh, material cost was a significant factor. So you used like complicated lattice girders and stuff as opposed to today where you use a solid steel girder, mm. um, you know, so Doesn't look as good. Uh, yeah, the, the, the newer ones definitely do not look as good. Um, <laughs> so they, they also sort of closely follow the route of existing streets. They were often very close to existing buildings. These were almost all privately built. And they were very loud because wooden ties directly on steel girders does not dampen vibrations very well. Um, mm. Yeah, you'd have to like Blues Brothers scene with the the L train going past. Yes, every couple exactly. Of how how right. fast does the, how often does the train come by? So often you won't even notice it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, the earliest ones were steam powered. You can see the steam engine on the Bowery in New York City here. Um, nearly all of them are electrified by 1910 or so. The first city to electrify their L, the first city to uh, um, electrify their L entirely was of all places Sioux City, Iowa. What? Um, yeah, <laughs> cool. In, in thriving metropolis, a thriving metropolis of Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah. Um, how how that, big was their system? Do we have. Uh, they had one line. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty easy to was, electrify then. Yes. Um, and uh, by modern standards, in terms of rapid transit, these pre-war L's, they had a lot of quirks, but they're very high performance, right? They move a lot of people very quickly. Uh, mm. Your trains would operate under line of sight rules, right? So there's no like train signals. Uh, you just need to keep a reasonable distance from the guy in front of you. And you do that by looking with your eyes. Watch the road, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. 
um, that meant you could have very, very high train frequencies, right? The train would come every 90 or even every 60 seconds. Wow. Um, which is something we can't do anymore. The best like communication based train control systems in like London and like Moscow can only do 120 seconds between trains. Mm. Um, I think Moscow might actually be a little bit better than 120 seconds, but I, I don't, I don't remember offhand. But we just, um, what we, what you're saying is we need to abolish some more safety procedures. Um, yes. Obviously, I just get rid yes. of the, well, it, it's harder to do line of sight and tunnels is the thing. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, this was, was a, a, also a dangerous system. Like it's, the collisions were not unheard of. Um, so usually eventually installed some kind of signaling system and, you know, lost some train frequency. Um, now these systems were privately owned. They're owned by companies that also ran the streetcars. So they were usually pretty heavily integrated into the streetcar network. You have stuff like time transfers, uh, elaborate transfer stations. We'll look at one later, uh, integrated ticketing. You buy the streetcar and the L ticket in one. Right. Um, but this is also a problem because there's usually three or four trolley companies, especially in a place like New York city. So you have three or four different ticketed systems and three or four blah blah you know you had to you had to think about taking these things a lot more um, and this was before the invention of the the great american tradition of uh stealing rides on trains mm -hmm. yeah i mean you could still fare dodge um fair like, dodging that's the thing that i wanted yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that's a couple other Tra train yeah. theft was what train was theft, sort of my yeah. first stealing, stealing the whole train, 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 yeah, train yeah. Robbery. Taking a one two three yeah. right yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like uh, in 1892 <laughs> one of the things you get more tracks than modern systems right you might have a three or four track l so you get local and express trains the trains are smaller the stations are shorter uh but the trains come so often it doesn't matter uh the top speed is pretty low the uh, equipment is very light uh, you know, lots of the early L's, you could only really take trains made of wood. Um, but again, you know, the, the, the top speed doesn't matter so much in an urban area. If you're doing 25, 30 miles an hour, that's perfectly fine for going like 15 blocks. Um, mm. now since there's lots of trains, there's lots of routes. Um, you know, so sort of today we think of rapid transit in terms of lines, you know, or, or like, uh, you know, so. New York City, you got like the A, B, C, D, E, F, blah, 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 number trains, so on and so forth. They all are. Yeah. And in Britain, we have an arcane system of madness runes in London. Um, <laughs> yes. You have to be either like born with or, or learn. Yeah. And then, and then like uh, these early L's, because they're running so many trains, they just decide, all right, we need to run at least one train for every possible origin and destination. Um, and you're just sort of. <laughs> expected to be able to look at the destination board and figure out what the route of the train is. Cool. Um, so, you know, complete chaos, right. In terms of like hmm. where trains went, um, <laughs> you know, but they're, they're faster than buses. They're faster than streetcars. They're faster than regular cars at this point. Uh, they're convenient. They're cheap. Uh, wh what happens to these things? Right. Uh, and the answer is uh, to make the long story short, these elves had three problems in the eyes of certain influential people right Ugh. which was they're loud they make the street darker and they were a blight right which is the sort of meaningless word for something you personally find offensive right uh you know sure. <laughs> you know people who had these complaints tended to live directly adjacent to the l or they had a business next to the l or they owned property next to the l and a lot of times these are people who did not ride the l of course not but they no form civic groups and say, hey, we got to get these things replaced with a subway and replacing them with a subway. Generally a good idea, well received by everyone, uh, but often reality intervened. Right. So a lot of these L's no longer exist and they 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 went three ways. Right. They either got replaced with a subway, they got modernized or they were just straight up demolished. Um. You know, so like in New York City, uh, pretty common you had replacement, right? You just replace the thing one to, one for one with a subway. The L is gone, but you still have the public transportation. Everyone's happy, uh, especially in Manhattan. This happened mostly on the west side. Um, you know, some parts of Brooklyn had subways built. Uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, they also tried to replace the L in Chicago with a subway. It turned out to be inadequate, so they kept the L's. Um, oh, nice. and then in, you know, here in Philly, RL was 
only converted to a subway for like 15 blocks yeah, in you... the 1950s. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things they might do is you'd relocate the whole thing into a highway median as they did in Chicago and Boston, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Um, you know, another thing is modernization. If you're in like Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, most of Chicago, you strengthen the structures to take heavier modern might trains. just fell off its stand. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. did yeah. you die? Yeah. No, my mic literally came unfastened from the stand. Hey, Liam's house happens. just exploded. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put myself on mute just for a second while I get this thing back screwed in. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you in a second. Um, so if you're you're doing modernization, you're strengthening these structures to take heavier modern trains. You're building new and quieter trains. You're installing, you know, dampers and like rubber gas gaskets on the structures to reduce vibrations. Case of Philly, I'm, you know, I'm kind of curious how how bad it is to like have to like live next to a modern one of these. Ah, uh, well, you could ask Liam, but he's muted because he lives oh. next to the L. <laughs> I mean, he manages to record a podcast with. I mean, the audio quality isn't bad in Dev, that sense. Dev, you need to cut that. Dev, you need to cut that. Uh, no, I guess it's fine. Yeah. That's fine. You can leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. I, I'll be right back. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our whole elevated uh, uh, railroad was uh, essentially rebuilt from scratch in the 2000s. Um, cool. They installed a bunch of stuff to uh, uh, reduce noise, right? But it's not like. It's not crazy quiet. It's not like silent, but it's not that loud. Mm. Um, you know, it's kind of uh, whatever. Um, but the most common solution is outright of demolition, course. right? Uh, Why have a public service when you could have no public service? When you could just not do that, yeah. Uh, a lot of times there's this sort of bait and switch involved, right? Which is the L would be replaced by a subway soon, but we got to get rid of the blight now, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so this is the story of like the Third Avenue L in Manhattan. It was kept open to supplement the Lexington Avenue subway until the Second Avenue subway could be finished, right? But by 1950, these real estate interests are complaining, complaining very loudly because their property values were dropping, which they assumed was because of the L. So mm -hmm. the Third Avenue L was taken down in sections over 20 years. Somehow property values didn't budge because, you know, it was New York City in the 60s and 70s. Crazy. Um, yeah. 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 Turned out not to have anything to do with the L. But, uh, you know. Just a blameless after... victim that they've yeah. decided, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a sacrifice. We have to. We have to uh, <laughs> we've cut the we, heart out of the L with an obsidian cut, knife. Yes. In hopes the property values will go up. Uh, <laughs> Let the blood spill all the way down to uh, the financial district. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they took down this Third Avenue L and the Lexington Avenue line got overcrowded. And after 70 years of no transit on the east side, uh, you know, all those people who tore it down, who insisted it be torn down are old and dead in the ground. And the Second Avenue subway has a whopping three stations now. Hello. Um, <laughs> Worth it. Hi. I actually have another question. Yeah. Is there any notable subway construction between sort of this like initial rust initial rush sort of between like let's say 1890 and 1930 and then nothing until like relatively recently at least on the east coast? So you have um you you really have uh on the east coast uh things are pretty stagnant. I mean New York City did not build a lot of new subways after like the 40s. Um you know, but then you had let's say the uh you know the great society subways right like uh the washington metro marta in atlanta um the miami metro uh what else bart in san francisco there are a couple big systems that were built uh starting in the lyndon johnson administration um but you know they are not they 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 are much more you know modern than uh these old fashioned l's i would say you're you're sort of pre-war New York City style subway is a very different animal to, uh, you know, something like the Washington Metro or something like uh, BART or, you know. Got it. So thank you. It's kind of a uh, it's, uh, you know, because these things are Chicago L. These things were built a lot more for the city of 1910 or so. Um, mm. The stops are closer together. The uh, the trains are more frequent. You know, you you don't really think about the suburbs at all in terms of service patterns. Um, 
and that's some instances uh more modern systems have been grafted onto these old systems but they're they're not uh that necessarily they're it's very yeah, different. It's, it's like yeah. it's designed for you to like live like i don't know like five blocks from where you work uh or to like get to the gang war that's happening across town um yes. like yeah okay fine yeah so is that something i noticed when i was uh watching the sopranos for the first time it's like Damn, a lot of these people wouldn't it would be a lot harder to murder if they took public transit and not driving. You know? <laughs> um, it's sort of like the, the gangs of New York thing, you know, yeah. that, that that's walkable gangsterism. Whereas exactly, the Sopranos exactly. is like sort of private transport, private vehicle based. I'm not yes. sure there's really like a, a public transport. I mean, I guess if you get into like stuff like like gang controlled bus lines and stuff, maybe, yeah. but yeah. You only get like a train system of gang warfare, which is a shame because that would be a great setting for someone to do like a tabletop role playing game. Um, Yeah, someone gets uh, full control of the Jersey Central. Yeah, Uh, give me fucking gangs of New York on uh, on like trains. Yeah. Yes. Um, So there's also some other factors to play for early L teardowns. Most often, the company going bankrupt, right? But the Mm. the big L teardowns were usually after a system had gone into municipal ownership, right? I guess our takeaway here is these elves are very good for their time, perfectly serviceable with modernization, very difficult to replace once they're gone. But, you know, short sightedness and impatience means a lot of people in neighborhoods which used to have good rapid transit don't anymore. Classic. A classic yeah. story for us. Yeah. Um, you just had to sort of do the maintenance and the stuff would be good. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so I'm like I like the way that they look. I like yes. the way that an elevated train looks. I like being like under them. It feels nice, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I especially like the old ones where the light sort of filters down through the ties. You know, you yeah, don't get yeah, that yeah. on a you don't get that on a modern concrete structure. But but you compare that. When they to, redid the L in hmm. Philly. They actually they they filled the whole thing up with concrete. It's um, depressing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little, little less nice. I mean, again, it it's quieter. like it's it it's quieter. all maintenance. It's all it's all maintenance decisions, right? Like you compare that to sort of like the you know films set in the seventies in New York, like the Warriors or whatever, where it's all fucking like looming under these big uh, like L train uh, tracks and arches, um, and it's just like, well, it doesn't have to be that yes. way, you know? Uh, you could like a fucking if we if we I would accept. Some Santiago Calatrava ass design where it all looks like it's made out of renderite and it's all very sort of like pencily and twisty and stuff. And you get a lot of light through it in this context, but like no one wants to spend that money. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, nowhere is better at these L teardowns than Boston. Um, greatest city yes. in the world. <laughs> uh, Boston Strong. Yes. Uh, Spencer Confidential. Um, Third thing. Yeah, uh, something about uh, molasses. Let's go Mets, yeah. baby. Shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> I'm walking I'm here. Walking here. <laughs> go Sox. Go Bruins. Go Celtics. Park the car in Harvard Yard. Harvard Yard. It's not in fucking Boston. It's in Cambridge. <laughs> so, um, in Boston... Uh, there was the Boston Elevated Railway, which eventually sort of owned what we now call the Orange Line, right? Um, they had a couple L's uh, in downtown Boston. There was the Atlantic Avenue L. Uh, Boston's had a couple L's. <laughs> um, the Atlantic Avenue L, that was demolished and not replaced. The Charlestown L was relocated about a million miles from its original location when they modernized it. I, mean, I think I have um, something for this. But today we're going to talk. Yeah, I do. L, Mr. Bob. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Today we're talking about the Washington Street Elevated, right? Um, it sort of opens in 1901. Uh, it runs from the Essex Station here to Forest Hills down here. Essex is now Chinatown. Forest Hills is now Forest Hills. Um, <laughs> nice. It passes through the South End neighborhood and uh, Roxbury, right? Uh, but it skips over a lot of the South End. Because those guys are close to downtown, they can take the trolley in, right? Um, and it's built with this sort of single-minded purpose, right? You take the trolley to the L. 
the L station is set up in such a way that you can quickly get off the trolley and onto the L as fast as humanly possible. Mm. And the L whisks you downtown in mere minutes. You can see the sign at Dudley Square here, Rapid Transit, eight minutes to Summer Street. Yes. Nice. Uh, these stations are very elaborate. Um, this is the Dudley Square station. Uh, this is the most advanced rapid transit station I've ever seen. Um, but basically, you know, the streetcar comes in, uh, it goes up this ramp, it stops, you get off the streetcar, you walk five feet, you get on the L and go. Um, and it does that on both sides. Uh, and then on the way back. Oh, that is yes, really yeah, slick. It's really, yeah. it's really, really good. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's very efficient. Um, on the way back, you stop over here and you have a much longer walk, but on the way back, the, the loads are different. Uh, the passenger loads are different, so it makes sense to to have the uh, to do it a different way there, right? Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a great commuter station. You've yes, got there. it is. It is designed for the single minded purpose of getting you off the trolley and onto the rapid transit train as quickly as possible. Um, you know, and 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 we're we're going to save you time as much time as possible. Mm. Um, funnily enough, this building still exists. Um, but they sort of cut the top off and lowered it 20 feet, and now it's a crappy bus terminal. Um, <laughs> Hell of a yeah. bro. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> at least I, I thought you were going to tell me it's like like escape rooms and bars now, and I was going to kill myself. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, this is like axe throwing. Oh there, my god! You, know? <laughs> you too can play in Decaying Empire. So. It's it's like an L themed yeah. bar. <laughs> so, so, uh, there is an L themed gas station nearby there, I believe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. So anyway, so uh, the South End and Roxbury they have this great L, right? This fantastic rapid transit system. <laughs> but we are we are um, also entering uh, this sort of era of road construction in Boston, right? Uh, so. <sighs> We got to talk about the central artery and the freeway revolts. Um, so Boston did not have a Robert Moses. What they had was a William F. Callahan, right? More of a planner. Everything's got to be. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So he's more of a planner than a politics guy. A lot of times stuff <laughs> backfired on him, right? He, uh, he put together the city's master highway plan in 1948, and the city just sort of sat there with no one doing anything about it, right? There's a whole bunch of time. Best thing to do with this a highway plan. This is true, plan, yes. You know? It's a whole bunch of time for... It's harm yes, reduction. Yes, actually. It's a whole lot of time for, like, uh, opposition to his projects to materialize, but, you know, he, 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 was, uh, he, was, not, he was not in the mold of uh, Robert Moses, who could do a lot of behind-the-scenes politicking. When he did it, it kind of... He, he screwed it up. Like, so yep. for instance, he had a, a secret meeting. Well, he's wearing a bow tie. Yes. Antisocial personality. True, yeah. like, Textbook, had, one might say. One example is he had a, a <laughs> secret meeting with Alfred Perlman of the New York Central Railroad. May have heard of him before on this podcast. Uh, he's trying to acquire the Boston and Albany right of way into Boston for the Mass Pike in 1956. And that meeting was instantly leaked to the press. And uh, yeah. basically every single town along the route was like, no, we don't want to do this. Now, they eventually you still see, did I wonder it. who did that do. Yes, you yeah. do. <laughs> uh, but Callahan's most infamous project. <laughs> this meeting two of us were at. I'm like, well, I didn't leak it. Yeah. How about this other guy, though? I assume he's fine. Callahan's most infamous project was the Central Artery, right? Which is this massive highway through the very center of Boston, they condemned blocks of buildings starting in 1951. The highway made this slow but steady march of construction from the Charles River towards South Station, right? Um, you know, so in New York City, there's this widespread opposition to highways, which Robert Moses steamrolled through with a combination of charm, charisma, and extreme nastiness and pettiness, right? Uh yeah, racism, yeah. things yes. of this nature. Callahan did not really have this force of character, right? And in early, he wasn't. He was racist not racist enough. enough, apparently. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, 
1956, the whole thing started looking like a mistake before it was even finished. Uh, Callahan and Matt, uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation relented. The final half mile of the central artery would be built at great expense in a tunnel. Uh, you know, so they, they, they finally finished the central artery in 1959. And by 1960, it was already over capacity and there's massive traffic jams every day. Woo! Uh, yeah. So history of every uh, road, yes. uh, you know, it's just this huge thing that cuts through downtown Boston. It was so big and so ugly. It, it, people started calling it the other green monster. That's um, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. The green monster, of course, being the big wall at Fenway. Um, Thank you, Roz. Yes, well, <laughs> well we don't some have people, any sport. Yeah, some people fair. might not know that. Um, I don't know. You huh. should know that. Uh, that should be in, in deeply, Fen deeply Fen in Fenway, your brain. Fenway Park, of course. Fenway Park, of course, home of the Mets. Right. Well, I'm um, done here. America's uh, greatest I, baseball I, team. Alice, uh, can you, Alice, can you DM <laughs> me your home address for no specific reason, please? <laughs> yes. Great, fantastic. <laughs> Um, it's fine. We we'll just yeah, beep yeah, all exactly. of that. It's so, good. with the the passage of the Federal Highway Act in 1956, though, the, the the playing field changes. Right, uh, the feds are going to pick put up 90 cents for every 10 cents of local spending. So, Can you imagine you, that sort of spending on like transit now? Anything, yeah. anything yeah, else? Imagine yeah. that. You know, they could finally make the 15 a subway. Yes. Uh, so at this point, Boston can't afford not to build. Uh, they got all this traffic from this one highway. Obviously, the solution to traffic problems is to build additional highways, right? Of and course. we'll one just ignore line. the fact that all those highways lead into the central artery, which is over capacity. One more right? line. Yeah. One more line. One more line, bro. Bro, I swear. One more line, bro. Bro. <laughs> bro, bro. Bro. This bro, time is going to be different, be different this time. Bro. Yeah. Bro. So... <laughs> planning was complete. It was time to start construction on the Southwest Corridor Highway, which is yeah. yeah see, I can never get my here. fucking like junctions to look this good in yeah, city yeah. skyline, so I have to get them off the workshop, and they never line up properly. I I feel their pain, you know. So, sort of the idea here is we're going to build the Southwest Corridor. It's along the right of way of the Boston and Providence Railroad um, to build a Southwest Passage. Yeah. The Providence. <laughs> uh, this is going to be an eight-lane multimodal corridor, right? Directly linking I-95 with the Massachusetts Turnpike, providing a more direct route downtown. Um, now, what was multimodal about it is they were going to relocate the Washington Street Elevated, the Orange Line, into the median of the highway, right? Ah, uh, um, yeah, that Spring Garden Station, yeah. clean air we love. Yes. Um, it's <laughs> unclear what was going to happen to the Boston and Providence Railroad. I think they were just going to use a different approach into South Station that already existed, because that was that is what is now Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. Um, so one of the tricks of getting these projects done is to move as quickly as possible, which Callahan did, right? While the Central Artery was failing miserably, uh, they started condemning buildings. Uh, wrecking balls got to work. There was vocal community opposition, but the damage was done before that could really, you know, sort of uh, take root, right? The city owned the corridor and come hell or high water, this thing was going to get built. But the cost started soaring. Political will waned. Callahan died in 1964. No one wanted... Lost. Which is yeah, not a good not, move if you're trying no, to get yeah, shit done. Yeah, not a great move uh, for, for a lot of things uh, in life, owing to the fact that you were, you were dead. Mm. Um, you know, so... You get them, Ross. <laughs> it impairs yeah. you in a lot yeah, of ways. Just, yeah. yeah. So uh, no one wanted this freeway, but the right of way had been cleared and seemed like, well, what else are you going to do with it, right? Um, to build a train. So that, that, the community opposition to this freeway expansion mm. also growing in other parts of the Boston area, particularly in the path of the inner loop freeway, uh, which would have been this guy here. Um, you know, all the, you know, uh, particularly in the city of Cambridge, which is where all the Harvard people go to Harvard, right? Um, yeah, it's where they park the it's car. It's where they park yeah. the car, yeah. Um, so in 1970, Governor Francis Sargent ordered a moratorium on freeway construction inside Route 128, which finally killed off the Southwest Corridor, except the corridor still existed, right? 
It was just a, a swath of land with no buildings on it that the state owned. Oh, for one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do with it? Um, build a shrine. Build a shrine. Build a shrine. Well, guess what they <laughs> no, do? No, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. So the Federal Highway Act of 1973, signed by none other than, uh, none other than R- Richard Nixon, recognized how unpopular these urban freeways were, and for the first time, states and municipalities could actually trade in their unspent highway dollars for mass transit dollars. Right, uh, in the southwest, mm. you could use like three slurp juices on a single yes. ape, and as a result, you could get like you could a get train. a train out of that ape. Yeah, so mm. the southwest corridor would rise again as this five-track rail corridor: two tracks for a new relocated Orange Line, and three for what is now Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, and it would also feature a linear park. Wow. Yeah. This is, I mean, first of all, uh, Neom BCFO destroyed. Second of all, this is what we like. This is what we want to see, yes, right? This, like, is, uh, uh, this is a good idea. Uh, yes. Um, you know, this is, uh, it is by all metrics a good project, except for some we're about to talk about. Um, construction is completed in 1987. You know, all right. Brand new rapid transit. Time to tear down that ugly old elevated railway, right? Uh, everyone's going to be happy. Yeah. There's going to be light on the street again. Commutes will be faster, blah, 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 blah. Folks living along Washington Street and in Roxbury uh, started to realize, ooh, there are some issues here. Oh, no. So if you look here, um, this purple line here should be orange, but this is the root of the orange line, right? Um, mm. Now, this red line here is the root of the old elevated. And this distance here is about half a mile. <laughs> oh. oh, you don't want to walk half a mile to get on half a mile. Uh, yeah, I don't want to walk any miles. Exactly. I don't want to walk at all. Mm. Yeah, I, I, want, I, I want to get on the train that was right there. Um, yeah. So this new line is about half a mile away in most areas. Uh, it ran through less densely populated areas, so it was less useful. And, uh, you know, surprisingly for a highway project, the neighborhoods it ran through were generally whiter and more affluent than uh, than the surrounding neighborhoods. Shoes on the other foot oh, now, once motherfuckers! Again, <laughs> once again, we were right, Callahan wasn't he racist, was not racist enough. If enough, he had been yeah. more racist, oh, Jesus then we, Well, then he would have <laughs> run it straight through Roxbury, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no more Jamaica Plain. Yep. Hmm. So, you know, that's probably one of the reasons why it was canceled, yeah. Um, what's more, you know, transit in general was deteriorating. The new stations didn't really help. You know, while this Washington Street L was configured with the express purpose of connecting with streetcars, the new stations were not so well integrated in the bus network. Uh, MBTA was rapidly cutting back on streetcar service with most of those streetcars gone by the 70s. Um, oh, this is fucking GM's fault. Uh, uh, that's a whole other episode. Yeah. Let me let me have my conspiracy theory. <laughs> so another blow to the neighborhood served by the Orange Line was the temporary suspension of the Green Line E branch to Forest Hills in 1985. Um, 
that is still suspended. Um, oh, so it's like a state of emergency yeah. in like Syria. Well, you can, you can sort of like... see here at the new Forest Hills station, they built these new streetcar tracks, uh, never used. Um, oh, terrific. Thanks, yeah. boys. Wow. Yeah. So new, this is, uh, this, this, this is, uh, there's, there's a lot of degradation to transit going on here and folks in Roxbury, especially, uh, are like, we, we should keep this L until there is some adequate replacement for it. They love keeping an L in Boston, go Bruins. Yeah. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, what MBTA says is no, and they demolish it. <laughs> Fuck God, you. Yeah, down, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can mm. walk, bitch. That's just what the sign says. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luckily, the people of Boston famously don't ever get like a chip on the shoulder about yeah. anything. So and that's I, why I Tom Brady has this in, like, seven good Super Bowls. Graces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so I assume they're all very positive about uh, these developments. Well, this begins a classic elevated railway story. We're going to provide an adequate service later. But in the meantime, you know, there's these five people complaining. It's depressing. Holes, right. You know, there's five people complaining. It's depressing mm. property values and three small business owners complained about noise. So we're going to tear it down now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so as I mentioned, these things are hard to replace. Uh, but, you know, they, 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 they are because they're just a superior form of transit because they're grade separated and everything. Right. Right. Uh, mm. So. During a, 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 a U.S. Department of Transportation study for replacement, they they promised uh, we're going to provide equal or better service uh -huh. to the neighborhood. Than I'm winking the Washington as I'm saying, it's going to be just yeah. as good. It's going to be just as Actually, good. Actually, what, what you're going to get a guy from the neighborhood who's going to call you a slur and then just sort of push you up a hill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Donnie. Donnie yeah, is going to yeah, fucking Yeah, he's going like... to do some anti-Asian crimes. Or was that Mark Wahlberg that did that? All right. Yeah. You're amazing, bud. So the initial plan here, we're going to extend the existing light rail system, you know, the green line, so that there would be frequent <laughs> transit at least as far as Nubian Square. I just, I just, I just like that it's not exclusive because we've already talked about. We set one episode in Boston, and now we're yeah. racing. That uh, Nubian <laughs> Square used to be Dudley Square. Yes. Uh, how do people feel about the name? Like, well, Dudley uh, legalized slavery. Uh, uh, was uh, in Massachusetts okay. Bay Colony yeah. in 1641. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so, so I got yeah. a great guy yeah, to name the thing right. after. Yeah, guy was a real no. piece of shit. So the idea here, you're gonna extend the green line through the disused Pleasant Street portal, right? Uh, and then that would go down like Washington Unpleasant Street. Street. Uh, what is, what is the Pleasant Street portal? It sounds like some fucking control so, shit. What? So there was you have the green line, it goes in a tunnel through downtown Boston. Yep. Uh, the green line is yeah. a bunch of former streetcar routes that all ran through the same tunnel. Um, but there were a couple more that came in a separate ramp. That was the Pleasant Street portal than all the existing lines do. That was disused at some point. I forget when exactly, uh, because all those lines were uh, converted to buses. So they had just this this entire streetcar tunnel. It's about a thousand feet long. That was just not in use. It's still there as well. Hmm. Um, cool. Yeah, and that would join the core green line. Uh, this is a system that would make a lot of sense, which is why the feds refused to fund it. Um, because, you know, the feds just funded this huge rapid transit uh, uh, line. Um, and it's kind of, you know, their internal justification here is, well, I don't know that we should be funding something that's almost adjacent to what we just funded. Um, so, so that doesn't happen, right? Um, this, this, this idea mm. does not happen. Um, so, MBTA comes up with a second idea: we're going to cheap out and have a trolley bus system. Ugh. We, we love half measures, yes. and the trolley bus is the ultimate oh, half measure. So this, this is just Hillary Clinton gonna... running the bus system. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> so they were still, they were still going to try and 
send the buses into the Pleasant Street portal uh-huh. uh, and like pave over. Wait, what? Yeah, they were going to pave over part of the Tremont Street subway. So your streetcars and buses could use it, right? Uh, what a stupid yeah. fucking so, city. You want to be a subway bus driver. Yeah. Yes. You want to run you'll a never bus see it. in a subway uh, tunnel. You know that, that uh, song Cold Town Road by the Barry McNeils? Uh, yes. We never see the sun down the Cold Town Road. It's like that, but for buses. Are you are you having trouble with the darkness bus? I, I, I'm 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 having trouble with the idea of being at like a subway platform and imagining a bus rocking up. I mm, yeah I, yep you yep. wait yeah this you feels wait so <laughs> so wrong. This feels so it's like socks and sandals. It's like you you don't belong down there. What are you doing here? You don't no darkness <laughs> bus. Darkness bus. I don't want to get bus. the darkness bus. I don't want to get the darkness goth bus. bus. Darkness bus. But the Why fucking wife is the whole place dripping like eyeliner. A mode concert. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to get the Sisters of Mercy bus. I don't want to do it. So, commutes from Dudley Square it was still Dudley Square at this point. It wouldn't be remain, renamed to Nubian for a while. Um, or these were advertised to be only 12, 20 minutes, right? It's renamed Which was, tribute to brand Nubian. Yeah. So this was twelve yeah. minutes slower than the L could do, but. That's the price of progress, right? Um, yeah, that's cool, what this but, is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this was further scaled back when MBTA realized MBTA is the Massachusetts Bay Transit Authority, by the way, folks. Uh, they realized something that was surprisingly obvious, uh, which is buses don't run on tracks, so it would take superhuman skill to steer them properly in the tunnels if they fit at all. That's why God, it's so bus. weird. Yeah, like, I just imagine the <laughs> sides scraping against the tunnel. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad, yeah. folks. <laughs> Not a good idea. So, folks who lived around Washington Street were forced to settle for much longer walks or taking the new Route 49 bus, which went on the same route as the old L, while MBTA sat on its hands for a while. Mm. Oh, did they? That's crazy. I, yeah. I I can't imagine them doing that, especially now. Yep. <laughs> now. In the meantime, in a completely separate area of Boston, the face of global shipping was changing, right? Folks were putting stuff into these big things called containers. I knew you that, were going to tell people to read the yeah. box again. Yeah. yeah. And that meant that, you know, traditional stevedoring, warehousing, so on, they're all in decline, right? Which meant Boston Seaport District was in decline. Uh, most of the, most of your Atlantic shipping had consolidated at the port of New York and New Jersey, and the small container terminal was all that they really needed in Boston. Um, and this was happening at the same time as the ongoing Big Dig project to put the cent- central artery underground, which is its own probably series we'll of there. episodes. Ted Williams, yeah. you son of a bitch! Yeah, you can <laughs> see you can see the Ted William tunnels under construction here. Um, were you ever in, were you, Roz, when you were a kid, did your parents ever take you to the Boston, uh, the Children's Museum? Oh, the first time I went to Boston was with you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, never mind then. <laughs> they used to have a whole exhibit on the big yeah. dig when I was a kid. Ugh. I didn't know if you had seen it. All right, moving on. Sorry. I always wanted to go see the big dig happening, and then, uh, no, they, they didn't want to go to and Boston. they dug it. They finished it. Yeah, like, they yeah, finished well, it. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great to have Justin Rosniak yelling at you, trying to navigate uh, through the, the big dig. And you're just like, wow, I could really use a beer. And then you don't. And you guys end up at the There's fucking There's a whole airport. bunch of vacant land here where there were rail yards, right? Hmm. Uh, that's a lot of land for someone to grab, right? Oh, sure. And the qu- question so. is, you know, should the city do something about this? Should they have, have some kind of value add here? Because they want this place to develop. Maybe you add some kind of public transportation, right? Oh, it's oh, time to do yeah. the DLR Boston edition, right? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, oh boy. Ooh. So this area is a little awkward to serve with public transit, given the existing system. You know, ideally, what you would not want to have is like, let's say, some kind of silly stub end system that goes into the seaport district and then just stops. That would be probably not the right way to do it. Mm. Um, 
So there's this developer proposes building like a monorail out to the seaport district in the mid 80s. Yeah, me. But, I'm just uh, like, you're reclaiming a Dockland <laughs> district. You fucking build the DLR again. You build I a. Guess. You build a you, yeah. <laughs> It's fun. It's gonna work this time. You, you you can sit at the front and pretend you're driving the train, and then uh, when it point, starts yeah. raining, oh, they like can't turn that. the windscreen wipers on remotely. So a guy has to come in, ask you to get up, open the front with a key, turn the thing, close the front again, and let you sit back down, and you can pretend you're driving it again. Like yeah, it's when great. I was, when I, I I did that when I was in London and th thirteen, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not not uh, open the panel, but pretend I was driving the train. It's, it's fun for children <laughs> of any age. Like yes. <laughs> so MBTA takes over the project. Right after an extensive, wide-ranging environmental impact study, they recommend a quote transit way unquote as the best option. What the fuck is that? It could link downtown Boston to the Logan Airport via the tunnel or uh, through the Seaport District and, you know, take advantage of the new highway infrastructure being built for the big dig. But what is it? It's a transit way. Whoa. It's a way with transit. Yeah. There's transit on the way. And it's going to be great. Yeah. Shut up. I, I, Furthermore, they determined it could connect with the new uh the new transit on washington uh washington street somehow which would be worked out in phase three but bus rapid transit was coming to boston it's it's a bus it's a way? bus it's, it's a bus bus rapid transit brt bert 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 talks about bert no one wants to talk about ernie no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Bus rapid transit. Ugh. What is it and what does it do? It's a scam. Here um, it looks like a bus lane. Is. Like Yes. So buses have problems, right? They sure. get stuck in traffic. Sure. They get stuck at stoplights. Yeah. They stop too often. Mm -hmm. People take a long time to board the bus because they're squeezing in through one door and fiddling with fares. I don't take right. a long time to board the bus. I'm fucking great at boarding a bus. I'm, I'm like a probably bus top one percent in the world at boarding a bus. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking around. I I like look up on my phone what I need to do with the tickets and stuff. I'm just like there. I'm just on it, mm. you know. And I get very mad when people aren't. I wish. I wish. I wish we could say the same about everyone else. We need. We need a. Uh... We need rigorous bus program of bus training. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. I mean, people always say, you know, you leave high school not knowing how to like balance a budget or whatever, but you leave high school knowing not knowing how to get on a bus. That's that's because well, they don't make failure. the kids. They don't make the kids pay fares when they get on the school bus. I know. So have an arcane know. system of fares <laughs> in order to like really, yeah. you know, fuck them around so they they get it. You know. Yeah, but you give them like tokens, but you have to use a specific one. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think they should have to pay money, but they should have to pay a fare. Mm -hmm, yeah. In the form of a token that they get at the school. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, you know, sometimes buses have very circuitous routes, right? Especially in the suburbs where you got to like drive to the front door of every shopping center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, generally this, these sorts of things degrade the experience of riding on the bus and increases the amount of time a bus needs to go from point A to point B. So I showed here, this is SEPTA Route 89. Right, oh. which goes, uh, it, it goes around a very silly route, very silly route. It goes nine and a half miles to go three and a half miles. <laughs> um, this is what you might call a coverage route because it's uh, the idea is okay, there's no public transit in some of these areas, or there's not very much, so we just run the bus, so we'll in give such them a, a pity way bus, it, right? It, yeah, yeah, it's a pity bus, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's like not especially useful, especially end to end. There's certainly people who ride it, you know, from part of the route to part of the route uh, where it makes sense. I mean, certainly down on like Aramingo Avenue here, that makes sense, but doesn't make sense to go farther than that. This is sort of, um, you know, and, and because it has this long, weird route, it's going to be unreliable. It's going to, you know, get stuck in traffic. You know, the bus is not going to show up when you expect it to. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and, and because of stuff like this, um, you know, people will say, hey, buses are great because they're flexible, right? They're easy to reroute or detour or to, um, you know, make changes to routes. But this is, uh, I think, really a big flaw in buses, right? 
And because of this sort of thing, you know, buses in major cities are very, very slow. Uh, like in New York City, the average speed of a bus is nine miles an hour. Um, yeah, and free electric. They're just sitting there idling a big diesel engine for all of this. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Or or even if it's electric, you still might be idling a big diesel engine. Um, you know, if you look at and even uh, if even if you're not, you're still wasting a lot of energy. Yeah, I well, so in 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 Moscow, right? Um, the current mayor is an insane man who decided it's not still to Yuri Lushkov, main... is it? I'm not sure if it's that guy. I, I forget exactly who started this campaign, but he was like, we're going to get rid of all the trolley buses in Moscow and replace them with battery buses. In fairness, in fairness Moscow trolley buses were grim. But um, yeah. So the thing is, Moscow. Moscow... So I guess of Yana. Moscow gets very cold. It does. And one it of does. the big energy expenses in a bus is heating the bus. Yeah. Sure. In fact, to the point where it's more energy than moving the bus. So all these new Moscow battery buses that replace the all-electric trolley buses have diesel heaters on them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Perfect. Yeah. Fantastic. Diesel uh, cigarettes. Progress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, some of these flaws I mentioned about buses are corrected through bus rapid transit, right? The idea is you have dedicated lanes. The cars can't drive in them. You get priority at traffic signals. The the light goes green when the bus approaches, right? The bus stops are spaced widely apart. So, you know, it's more like rapid transit than it's like, you know, a bus that stops at every corner. But they're not so widely apart that you can't walk between them, right? Mm. Um, passengers pay their fare before they get on the bus so everyone can board more quickly. You can use all doors to board the bus. Um, the bus routes are very direct. They're along major corridors where lots of people want to go. You get rid of unnecessary turns and deviations from the route, so, so on and so forth. Not to be a supremacist about this, but you make a bus better by making it more like a train and eliminating yes. more of the features of a bus and adding more of the features of a train. Yes. Yes. What if you made it longer too? What if you just joined a couple of like separate vehicle bodies together through some kind of like flexible coupling? Oh, that's on the next slide. Um, <laughs> now the first system the first system opens in Runcorn, England in 1971 as part of a new town development which is essentially just a dedicated bus road complete with a few elevated segments but uh, I think the one we really look at is uh, something uh, uh, in Brazil the uh, Curitiba uh, bus system I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that um, yeah. Sure, it's fine. You know, oh, no, you did all we right. We only care about Mexico yeah. today. Brazil can get fucked until whatever yeah, day it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not Brazil day, it's Mexico day. Mm, that's right. Um, so you look at the, the, this is like the gold standard for bus rapid transit here. You got really big, really fast buses. They're in lanes which are physically separated from traffic, right? Um, you have air conditioned stations with off board fare payment, you have level boarding. Right, so nice. people who are disabled can use it very easily, and that also means you board the bus faster, right? Uh, traffic signal priority, all the stuff they have on the system, right? And these sorts of bus rapid transit systems do not perform quite as well as the metro, but they certainly give something like light rail a run for its money. Ow! Mm. Uh, Were you was, just attacked by a cat? Was that, was that yeah, that was, that was that was milkshake getting on my shoulder. Yeah, um, so. Theoretically, these are cheaper and easier to implement than metro or light rail, but there's a problem. Uh, these buses are flexible, right? Mm. Not not in terms of uh, you know flexible in that you can see here. This is a double articulated, a, a double articulated bendy bus here. Love um, a bendy bus. If, if oh, yeah. Milkshake will get out of my way. Um, anyway, so. <laughs> You know, these buses, like, they can travel outside of the dedicated lanes and on regular roads, so there's always rooms for cost savings, right? Uh, Even when the cost saving is blatantly false economies that'll harm the project. This is called BRT creep. But uh, creep. Bert creep, yeah. Bert creep. <laughs> so we'll look at a few examples here. Um, one oh, very... The fucking NYPD. Yes, uh, one worst very police common, department in America. 
One very common example of BRT creep is the location of the bus lanes, right? Center running bus lanes require islands in the street for station, uh, stations, which cost money and takes up space. So instead, you just move the bus lane to the curb. Now, what and happens the cops when you park there and, and mm. beat an unarmed person to death? Not even just the cops, like any asshole who has who has yep. or can print a just, placard. Just feels like, like it, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, this this attracts cops. The cops park the car there and delivery trucks who also idle there, right? Which means the bus can't this use the lane. Attracts cops like they're a kind of like mold, you know? Yes. They are. They are. You call them? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh, grown um, cops on it. Okay. Yeah. So another cost saving strategy is maybe we merge the bus lane with the turn lanes at each intersection, right? Um, where you wind up with a situation where, let's say, like a quarter of each block is just mixed traffic lanes with paint on them. Mm. Yeah. Or you can do one of the things we've done in Philly, uh, where you do have center running lanes. This is the Route 15 trolley, but you merge it with the left turn lane, which means at every intersection, the trolley is delayed by vehicles which spend the most time at every intersection, which are left turning vehicles. Uh, which of course, because you know they got a you know, a lot of times you sit through multiple light cycles to turn left, so that actually you have dedicated lanes which are slower than general traffic lanes. Um, yeah, huge huge waste. Um, I've timed this. It is actually much slower on the dedicated lanes than it is further down where it's mixed traffic. Um, <laughs> it's brutal. So it's fucking yeah. brutal. So some of this stuff is done for cost or space constraints, right? Drivers get mad when you take away their lanes or their parking spots, even if traffic flow objectively and measurably improves. Um, Small business owners especially get mad when you take away their street parking spots, even if those parking spots are like all occupied by, you know, a 1993 Corolla with flat tires and expired tags, Um, you know, hasn't moved since 2007. Uh, but if you get rid of they that were gonna work spot, on it, you know, yeah. at some point, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So a lot of times these, these projects, you wind up with discontinuous bus lanes or you eliminate them entirely. Uh, then other parts start to go signal priority ir- irritates drivers and is expensive off board fare collection creates expensive security problems at the machines, except cash, um, all door boarding makes fare evasion easier, right? And even really simple innovate interventions like moving bus stops to the far side of the intersection, sometimes that'll get cut too. I, I can I can solve two of these problems at a stroke by like funding it by tax and making like fares free. Oh yeah, obviously free fares wouldn't help speed up buses. Yes. Um, you know, yep. but but uh we're cost cutting here. We're we're not okay. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Yeah. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I came into so, the I came into the sort of like austerity meeting with ideas of how to make the service work better. Nope. Mm. Um, after all this, you wind up with something like, in the worst case, something like the SEPTA Boulevard Direct Bus, where they have <laughs> fancy paint and nicer stations, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> Worth it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, because of the wide variety and quality of systems that are marketed as BRT. The Institute for Transportation and Development Policy, some big NGO thing, created the BRT standard, which is a points-based ranking system to assess the quality of BRT systems around the world. I don't feel comfortable medicalizing these things. I think that if you want to identify as a BRT, you should be able to do that without (laughs) somebody like (laughs) demanding that you conform with a certain set of practices. If you can pass as BRT. (laughs) Um, now, uh, th- these are ranked as, uh, you know, basic BRT or a bronze, silver or gold BRT. Um, the first gold standard BRT in the United States opened in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 2019, which is some foreshadowing here. Oh, no. Yeah. So let's look at the silver line as built. It's bad. <laughs> so terrible logo. Yeah. 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 This grand scheme is unveiled in 1998, a new bus rapid transit silver line to right historical wrongs and finally provide residents along Washington Street with the transit they deserved, while also stimulating growth 
in the post-industrial wastelands of the Seaport District. Phase one would run along Washington Street. Phase two would be the tunnel through the Seaport District. Phase three would link the two lines into one. Gorgeous. Uh-huh. Okay, let's do uh-huh. it. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Construction on Washington Street started in 2001 and finished in 2002. It went Easy. very, very quickly. It went very, very quickly because it delivered almost nothing. Yay! <laughs> so the concept was to run buses in dedicated lanes from Nubian Square, which was then Dudley Square, to Boston South Station, right? And Downtown Crossing, I believe. Um, this was quickly scaled back into providing dedicated lanes where practical, right? Which meant removing these bus lanes from the project where the line was most congested. Oh, cool. So you can only they, have them where you don't need them. Yes, yes. exactly. Uh, so downtown Boston, no bus lanes. Near Nubian Square, no bus lanes. Um, <sighs> now, Boston is an old city with short blocks, right? Um, here at Washington and Massachusetts Avenue, we can see sort of a typical configuration, right? We have the parking lane, the bus lane, two travel lanes, the other bus lane, and a parking lane, right? But we're also merging the bus lane with the turn lane. So for about half of this block, the bus lane is a general traffic lane. Um, this is a typical configuration. Um, this is a mess. Yeah. Yes. How is so, anyone supposed to go anywhere, man? Uh, Fuck well, you, I guess. The, the, the bus pulls into the general traffic lane because this is also a setup that encourages double parking. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm uh, going to get people... a fucking share in a like a highway paint company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, so yeah, this is this is a setup that really encourages double parking. Also, if you're parallel parking, you're gonna go through the bus lane, right? But you know, this is uh, it, it, it's okay because buses aren't for real people after all. It's fine for it's for the poor. Fine if I can block the bus lane for a second, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, the, the 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 Silver Line buses here, they they frequently have to you know go into general traffic lanes to get around some jag off, right? Um, so <laughs> you'd think though, okay. The lanes themselves are not very good. You'd have some other BRT features, though, right? But no. Fuck you. Uh, they don't. Um, so, like, fares are paid on board like a regular bus. Some of the bus stations are nicer, but some of them are worse than average. Like, this is at Worcester Square. Uh, there's not even a shelter. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Stand yeah. in the rain. Fuck you. Um, I think four intersections had signal priority, but they waited until 2006 to turn that on. And they got rid of the trolley bus idea. They, these buses run entirely on compressed natural gas. Oh, for fuck's sake. Like Mm -hmm. they're not even like electric, like gas, but okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Why is those like sort of unsustainable, like like, stepping stones we tripped over on the way to electric power? So, Where it's like, oh, you yeah. know, I, I, incidentally, you know, someone crashes into the bus. Now it's like venting gas out of the top. A mushroom cloud. Mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah. this will slow traffic. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you seen a, a like a hydrogen bus that like flip the fucking safety valves? It literally, it looks like a flamethrower in three directions oh, at the dear. same time. I, I, I have never seen that. I want to see it, that now. Look at look it up on YouTube. It's a great time. Maybe we can get Dev to like yeah, embed do. some yeah. some photos or some video. But like, it oh, fully sweet. like has because you got to have as many different like vents as possible. So it will fully right. just like shoot flame out of the top and the sides, and you'll see it like burning the paint off of cars. Oh, that's <laughs> on the side of it. Now, just use electricity, this... dude. It's from the yeah, fucking yeah. like. It comes as, it comes from a wire. You can get. Uh, ah. We'll get. We'll we'll get to that. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, mount this, this, a small uh, nuclear reactor in every vehicle. Now the Silver Line has more ridership than the former Forty Nine bus. I believe we had double the ridership, like fourteen thousand people a day. Uh, but this has also caused its own problems. You know, at every station, the dwell times are very high, like over a minute. Um, so this has made the Silver Line bus rapid transit 
one of the slowest buses on the MBTA with an average speed of eight miles an hour. Yeah, Question. beating New York everywhere, baby. Do, does yeah. it on 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 the like uh, trans medicalist spectrum? Does this rate a silver medal? Is the silver line a silver BRT? It the, doesn't. Um, even po- it doesn't even fucking podium. <laughs> I believe the, what's it, the Institute for Transportation Policy, whatever it's called, uh, yeah. rank this as not BRT. <laughs> it's not even podium. Fuck. Not even podium. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> DNF. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, gorgeous. Not even a participation medal. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> they fully just called this thing a brick. <laughs> it goes to show there are some problems that can't be solved with paint on the street. I've never believed that, especially now yeah. that I'm buying shares very strongly in in paint. Like yeah, uh, we're investigating is, uh, very strongly. For, for for those of you who uh, uh, are not watching the podcast, what you see here Dickheads. is part of Washington Street with bus lanes, and then a further part of Washington Street, also on the Silver Line, which has Black Lives Matter painted on it. Um, Does yeah, that count as that, a bus lane? I, you you see like um trans flag crosswalks in London too, and I'm like, yeah. okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, I guess. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, this, this I, is, mm. Mm. yeah exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, you well, know, it's, this, it's is, better, this is it's actually better to one paint of the a sidewalk than to do nothing at all, obviously. Well, yeah, that's, I guess. that's true. Yeah. I, I yeah. sort of appreciate the sissy making an effort to make me feel welcome. I think there are other things well, you probably could have spent that money right. on. Yeah, yeah, exactly that, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. You could have put bus lanes in this section. No, <laughs> we, give, we give what the city of London the Alice Lane. This is Ooh. right next to oh, this is you goes only sixty miles an hour. You you, you no just st- have to repurpose all of the like Olympic VIP lanes, and it's just like you must be driving a silly little car. The little like roundel for it is a Trabant. Uh, yes, a Trabant, mm. a Yugo. Yeah, the the uh, dictated of course by Alice Caldwell Kelly. To mm-hmm. determine what is appropriate to drive in the Alice yep. Lane. Yep, yep, yep. In gay little car uh, lane. Gay little car lane. Big yeah. fan. Big fan. Mm-hmm. Now, for all its faults, this project was at least very cheap. About yeah, I bet it wasn't. It didn't fucking do anything. It didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah we we're having like... success, boys. We painted some parts yeah. of a road. We bought a it bus can't... and we painted a road. Okay. Yes. Uh, this came in at about twenty-seven point three million dollars. Um, Chicken <laughs> feed, nothing, almost yeah, nothing. Yeah. You know, a chump change, chump change. <laughs> we- Man, if I had twenty-seven point three million dollars, I wouldn't even be able to buy uh, like a loaf of bread. They spit in your face for anything less than thirty million dollars. So, like, they did pretty well yeah. on the money yeah. here. But, but we can't say the same thing though about phase two. Oh God, I, I, yeah. I don't know phases. Um, Okay. Phase two of the Silver Line was undertaken concurrently, and oh boy. Um, the idea is we're going to have a tunnel connecting South Station to Silver Line Way, right? Which is the station right next to the Ted Williams Tunnel. Mm. Uh, services would radiate from there to the airport, the design district, and City Point, right? So, you know, down World here. Trade Center, up Boston, over there. That's in the wrong city. No. Um, on, yeah, guys. it's up here. It's weird. Um, you know, the, 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 the tunnel would travel under both the, uh, Fort Point channel and several historic buildings, right? And to reduce the cost of the tunnel and avoid costly ventilation systems, the buses would be dual mode trolley buses, electric in the tunnel and diesel on surface streets. Oh, you um, know, you know it's fucked when you have to have like dual power modes. It's the same thing as like um uh what's now HS one, where it's like at Faversham it has to change from like um uh, like a catenary to um a third rail, where it's like, um, guys, for fuck's sake, please, I'm begging you. I didn't know that. I thought it was a overhead line the whole way now. Uh, it may be now. I'm basing this entirely out of knowledge from Train Simulator. Folks, mm. but I do. It does mean that I know the procedure <laughs> to to change over from like pantograph to to like third wheel. Gee. At least you can do that in motion. Um, <laughs> mm, I don't think you. I don't think on those you could even like. I think I you had to like North stop does it at in Faversham. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know they didn't have battery buses at the time. We barely have battery buses now. Mm. Um, you know, so that they, they start construction in 1996, I believe, 
Um, they have a big chunk of problems with construction. The underwater portion of the tunnel was to be an immersed tube, right? Which is you, you dig a trench, you bring in the tunnel segments on a barge, you sink those tunnel segments, then you fill in the trench, right? But they found a boulder the size of a large boulder in the right of way. And, and it took a full year to remove and redesign the tunnel or remove the boulder. And they had to do some redesigns to the tunnel to account for it. I don't understand how that worked, but that was a whole year delay. The city of Boston was defeated by a rock for a year. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, the tunnel passed underneath the foundation of the historic Russia wharf buildings, right? That's these guys here, mm-hmm. um, you know. So to preserve these historic buildings, the soil beneath them had to be frozen and stabilized. They had to build new foundation structures while holding the buildings up. Um, there was a huge, massive amount pres- massive effort at preservation, and two years later, a developer, a developer came in and facademized them. You know, essentially <laughs> gutting. <laughs> gutted the buildings entirely so they could put a tower on top. So that was useless. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they build these two jaw-droppingly enormous stations, right, um, at Courthouse and the World Trade Center. These are enormous underground bus stops. Uh, it's really difficult to get the sense of scale here. Because mm-hmm. I know Liam and I have been in there once in the courthouse station. Yep. And it's so big. It's a cavern, it's, dude. It's yeah, enormous. It's, <laughs> Did you guys beat the charges or? Uh, no. Nope. Mm, I had to sorry. go to Boston prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you've ever heard, I, you've heard I, of Boston Charlie. Now get ready for Boston Justin. Yeah, I got stuck in there for, I got like three days locked up for saying something positive about Manhattan clam chowder. Uh, <laughs> it's just tomato soup with clams in it. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> it's on it's on shower hall. Eat shit. <laughs> so these these things are Fuck palatial. You. They spared <laughs> no expense on these. The tunnels were a different matter. They were oh, built they for spared some expenses. <laughs> they were built for a design speed of a whopping twenty five miles an hour, but in practice, the buses usually go fifteen miles an hour. Because they're restricted by the driver's ability to steer the bus in the tiny tunnel. No, you motherfucker! You made the <laughs> darkness bus again. Yeah, this is this is the Elon Musk darkness loop. Bus. Well darkness before the bus. Elon Musk loop. <laughs> I, I but like I know why though. It's because you could cut the ribbon on a station, but not on a tunnel. And so yes. they were like, "Check this shit out, fancy station. Uh, this is the way of the future." Like five of the lights in the ceiling are already out, and no one's changed them, which is like yes. funny. Uh, but like, what what the real the real kicker here is though, once you get through the tunnel and go to the Silver Line Way station here, this is where they take down the trolley poles and turn on the diesel bus, right? Um, this is where the buses radiate out into various lines. So you come out of the tunnel here, you stop here, you take the trolley pole down, and then let's say. I want to go to the design district. Well, Mm. I go out over here. Okay, easy enough. You come back roughly the same way. If you're going to City Point, I believe you turn south somewhere over here. Let's say I want to go to the airport. Why? The airport is through the Ted Williams tunnels. You you don't want to go to the airport. Anyway anyway out but Logan, man. Boston Logan, that's when 9-11 started, for fuck's sake. If if you want to go to Logan Airport, you got to go through the Ted Williams tunnels here. I don't want to go to Logan Airport. Silver... Silver Line Way does not connect to those tunnels. So after you take the trolley pull down, you go out Silver Line Way, you go down the hall road here, you backtrack, you backtrack, you backtrack. Um, I believe you get off somewhere around here, and then you loop around, and then you come back, and then you go all the way out here. Mm-hmm. What kind of so fucking just... speed run bullshit half a press transit connection is that? Yes. Now on the way back, it's worse. Yeah, go cool. roads. Yeah, because on the way back, you may notice you've backtracked about a third of the length of the transit tunnel. Mm-hmm. On the way back, you actually come through the tunnel, you exit onto a surface street, and then this is just about where the World Trade Center station is. So the bus actually stops at the World Trade Center station on the surface, 
then goes down Congress Street, goes back on a Silver Line way, goes underneath, and then it stops at the uh, World Trade Center underground a second time, you know, uh, just for a good measure. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Um, at least so the fucking is, Elon Musk loop is just a loop right now. Right. Yeah, this is actually several loops in a, com- a small area. Um, now, there is, you may notice this ramp here, uh, but only the police use that. The police don't, <laughs> won't let anyone use yep. that until 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now love, the buses I, can sometimes use it. I love how the police have, like, taken their enemy to be all forms of public transport. Yeah, you know, yeah but they've taken their enemy to be the public. Um, well, that too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you look at a system like this, and this is why the flexibility of buses is sometimes bad. Because mm. someone will look at this and say, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> this fucking, <laughs> like, wrong with tangled, this. like, knot of spaghetti. Yeah. I, I, like, I will say one thing about this slide, by the way, uh, is I don't want to go to legal seafoods harbor side. Oh, it's good. It's good. But, but the name, the name. Yeah, though. don't worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about legal that. Legal seafoods. Legal seafoods is good. They had a test yeah. kitchen out there too for a while. I don't know if it's still there. You're not going to have illegal seafoods. I mean, I'm, um, I, I just know, but like, it's the, good. The, I promise it's good. Ra- uh, so raising a lot of questions that are answered by the name of my restaurant, you know? Exactly, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, legal seafoods is supposed to be very good. I've never been there. Um, anyway, the final cost of this turd was $624 million in 2004 dollars, or about $1.1 billion today. Ooh. Um, yeah. Also, build... I, I, know, I know the 2008 financial crisis was bad and everything, but man, it's always a, a shock to me when everyone's like, 2004, which you think of sort of as like, I don't know, like a year ago or something. Yeah, money right. was worth like uh twice as much then so we have these two separate silver lines the seaport district silver line and the washington street silver line we're supposed to join them up in phase three okay three oh boy yeah so it goes from south station to boylston on the green line down to the new england medical center you know, and this is the thing that's going to join these two together. It's going to finally make the investment worth it. You're going to have a lot more ridership. You're going to have this new tunnel through downtown Boston. It's going to be, everyone's going to be happy, right? Yeah, that's um, what they're going to be in Boston. It's happy. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> you would be able to get, you'd be able to get rid of some of the worst mixed traffic sections of phase one while simultaneously linking to more subway and trolley services. Despite the slow speeds, this is still going to be faster than surface traffic, blah, 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 blah. Un- really unlock the potential of both ends of the silver line, even though both ends are extremely flawed. So they canceled it. Um, yep. <laughs> Fuck you. What? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> What's the d- walk, Alice. Walk. Oh, okay. Yeah. You specifically. So, you walk. Okay. Fine. The MBTA. Uh, was- go socks, baby. <laughs> Fucking walk everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> go walks. <laughs> The MPTA was moving full steam ahead in 2002, trying to get the thing funded, but, you know, there's complications, right? Some of the route went under Boston Common, and some people were concerned that that might damage it. Yeah, like America's you know, you... buried under there. Like, yeah, yeah, well, it ruins the ducks. Yeah. Mm. Um, some of the stations were redesigned and realigned. Oh, uh, I, some I of the... forgot they fucking did this, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like having non flashbacks to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Residents were concerned about impacts to the park the city had built on top of the Pleasant Street incline, because, you know, you'd have to get rid of the park in order to use the incline. Uh, You know, maybe you shouldn't have built the park there on useful transit infrastructure. Um, You can't use logic with these people, Roz. Yeah. So, by 2005, the completion date had been moved back to 2013. Costs were still storing. (laughs) People were calling it the Little Dig. Um... (laughs) I read Liam joke a laugh though. Yeah. <laughs> I remember all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of this hem hawing and harumphing, little redesigns, little realignments over the next four year few years. None of it goes anywhere. Costs keep going up. In two thousand nine, the FTA made a decision not to fund the project 
as it was no longer cost effective, effectively killing phase three. And that's where we are today. Um, Fuck you. That's right, motherfucker. Fuck you. You could have you could have done the like the monorail idea, and it would have been better than this. You could like, have done fucking anything. You mm-hmm. could have bought you know. You could have bought a bullpen for the socks. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what now? <laughs> yeah. You'll get nothing and like it. Yeah. You'll yeah. get nothing uh-huh. and like it. Since then. Uh, the MBTA has occupied itself with other pursuits. Um, like ruining like, the Green Line. Yeah, mm. uh, uh, the Green Line extension that was mandated as part of environmental mitigation for the Big Dig, um, you know, which has just wrapped up recently. Another thing they've uh, started to do is get rid of all their trolley buses and replace them with diesel buses for the environment. But... But that's bad. That's the opposite well, of what they they're should. sort of assuming that a reliable battery bus will exist soon, uh, and won't will you know, it? take a well. No. In the problem with Boston is it gets cold, much like Moscow, mm. um, which means when you get rid of the trolley buses for a hypothetical future battery bus, um, you may wind up with a diesel heater. Uh, <laughs> incredible but, but they have just been running diesel buses on their former trolley bus routes um including into like underground bus t- terminals and stuff like that so so so, so um, boston but, less less functional more corrupt city government than moscow not as bad uh, as providence though <laughs> yeah I, I i mean i they're going down the same route boston and moscow um you know which is as uh, get rid Getting of the trolley buses because we had yeah, yeah, yeah except they don't they, yeah instead of vladimir putin you got tommy from quincy yeah <laughs> coming in <laughs> tommy the, from quincy the has W-E-I. flown a drone into the boston courthouse tommy from uh, quincy has 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 a lot of opinions both on the Sox bullpen and on race relations you yes. don't want to hear either <laughs> how good is he at judo though <laughs> uh, he's very bad unless you count getting into fights at a dot tavern may it rest in peace <laughs> can't believe they um, closed that fucking bar dude that was a good bar um, there's no plans to connect the two silver lines there's no plans <laughs> to fix any of these obvious problems um, <laughs> just suffer, just suffer. <laughs> like, <laughs> you'll get nothing in like it yeah, the the MBTA is still saddled with a whole bunch of debt from the big dig. I I don't fully understand how that works, uh, but they just wound up taking on a bunch of the debt. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are now several streets in Boston with bus lanes equal to or better than the Silver Line bus lanes, mm-hmm. like actually really good bus lanes. Um, you know, so this is an embarrassment. I think I it's it's yep. it's just a bizarre, you know, set of circumstances here where. It's like, all right, we're going to do bus rapid transit, and we made the bus worse. <laughs> I think the only thing that really... And they closed Dot Cavern. I think the only thing that really, you know, made this bus uh, line improve ridership was they added it to the uh, subway map. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, other than that, it's kind of like, this is a hunk of shit. I mean... <laughs> Incredible stuff. Yeah. So... What did we learn? Nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, absolutely that's the thing. nothing. Yeah. Like uh, if anything, we learned kind of the opposite. Like Better like, things aren't possible. Yeah. yeah. Only worse things. Darkness worse things bus. are possible. Darkness yeah. bus. That's Darkness right. Darkness bus. This is this is uh the, the whole <laughs> ordeal is just it, from the beginning to the end, just stupidity, bad decisions, <laughs> half-assed efforts. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, go socks, baby. Yeah, go, go socks. <laughs> go socks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, if, uh, citizens of Boston, this could happen to you. I have one thing to add. Uh, <laughs> so I did record a Boston themed episode, and tonight is game three versus the Sixers and Celtics, and Corinne is looming over me. No, no, go Shut Celtics. No! Go Celtics. Go Celtics. Celtics and six. Thank you. <laughs> He's lying. No, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nope. If we, if, if uh, Charlie, are you on the still MTA getting married now? Copyright. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting married. Although she's storming out of the room. Uh huh. This time of year, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. We have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. More like Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Bye, sweetie. Dear oh. Liam, etc. Yeah, what? fuck what? you all. What That's right, fuck? bitch. That's Why right, bitch. Fuck? I'm the Marquee Talent, bitch. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. oh, it feels so good. Oh, I hope yes. you're happy. Uh, oh, it's like those old Morgan Stanley issues where they'd be like, either you put Morgan Stanley at the top or not at all. <laughs> Liam, etc. God <laughs> damn it. <Yay>. Yeah. <laughs> I am an architect. Oh. <laughs> it's a real sort of like roller coaster ride there, you know? <laughs> Several years ago, I was tasked with converting a warehouse built in 1914 into a warehouse district style mixed use building. Uh, I feel less, less happy now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> a team consisting of me, a structural engineer, and two representatives of the general contracting firm did an initial inspection tour of the vacant building and found it to be a nice but unremarkable reinforced concrete frame structure with brick infill. I sure, used, it's used, every building. Yeah, like, I, right. I use this as an example. This is actually the Bud Factory in Philly, but you know, reinforced yeah. concrete frame, brick infill panels. This is very common warehouse uh, structure in the United States. I, I quite like them, actually. This is one of my favorite types. I of like buildings. them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so... Anyway, it was in decent shape, apart from some spalling of the concrete at the underside of each floor slab. Uh, interesting side note is that rebar was not a common item in 1914, and rail stock was frequently used for the concrete reinforcing. Um, Interesting. Yeah, but the final part of our inspection was to scope out the roof. This is the point where the shaking hands with danger part of the story begins. Ooh. The only access to the roof was via a ladder that was located inside the giant elevator shaft that formed the center of the building. The ladder was made out of one-inch diameter steel bar stock and had anchor posts made of the same bar stock projecting off the back of the verticals. The posts were embedded in the concrete of the shaft, and there was a pair of them every six rungs or so. The climb to the roof from the uppermost floor of the building was about 35 feet. One by one, we stepped off the edge of the shaft and swung out onto the ladder. You can imagine this uh, ladder just on the side of the shaft, and you got to like, okay. I'd, oh, yeah. Three points of contact here, um, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I was first, the structural engineer started second, and the contractors followed. As soon as one person had started up the ladder, the next started right behind with just a rung or two between them. Note that no embarrassing safety harnesses or other such items were in use. Oh, of course. I mean, in fairness, yeah. where would you secure them to? Like, the ladder? Yeah, the ladder. <laughs> when I was fairly near the roof hatch with the three guys right behind me, I felt the entire ladder pull away from the shaft wall and bow out by about eight inches. Yeah. I looked down and could see that the posts embedded in the concrete at my knee level had pulled completely out of the wall, and concrete debris had rained down on the head of the structural engineer below. I could also see that the post embedments were completely smooth without any knurling, end flaring, or any other texture that could provide a mechanical bond with the concrete. Oh, cool. So they, they just don't... put it in there when it was soft and then just waited. Yeah. They'd only been embedded in the concrete by about one and a half inches. Not that far into the concrete either. I froze for a second, but then heard the structural engineer and the contractors give a small laugh. They looked up at me as, this, as though this was no big deal, so out of sheer peer pressure, I kept heading for the roof, as did we all. <laughs> Least peer-pressured architect. <laughs> yeah. Like, architects don't fear death, they fear being laughed at by structural engineers and contractors. Yes. We made it to the top, took a look at the roof, and found that it was unremarkable. Since the only way back down was via the same ladder, and since we were all supposed to be manly construction types, we started to head down without comment. I made sure to wait to be the last person down, though, and hung back a bit to see if the whole ladder would rip free with the weight of three guys on it before taking my chances. Oh, dear. The total fall height, if this had happened, would have been about 80 feet straight into the pit at the basement, which was partially filled with murky water and miscellaneous steel components. Ooh. 
She's like, yeah, go down this broken ladder over the pit of spikes and and, <laughs> and pit of spikes and disgusting water. <laughs> A literal punji pit. <laughs> yeah. They made it successfully, so I started down. As I passed the initial failure point, I could see the whole ladder by this time it deformed outward by about a foot, and I could feel a pronounced flexing of the ladder, as well as seeing concrete dust from the subsequent post angers as I passed each pair. After a very long, a very long seeming climb downward, I made it to the landing. We all started making nervous dad jokes about the incident. Looking upward after the incident and shaking the ladder a bit, we believed that only the top pair of anchors was still completely embedded in the concrete by the time I made it off the ladder. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. You only need, the ladder only needs to be secured to the wall by like two things. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, that ladder worked fan fantastic twice. Um, <laughs> I mean, hey, it held up for like a hundred years. So like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. The building in Austin, Texas, now houses a hipster brew pub and a lot of, of partially empty tech office space. Of course. My, my lesson from this incident was that personal visual inspection of a roof by an architect is unnecessary and other more specialized consultants can do this job better. <laughs> <laughs> this... Mm. No, this one really troubles me. Um, I uh, I would not be doing this. I would not climb that ladder. Call me a pussy. I, I don't care. I, like this used to be my job. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the, the 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 you know you 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 wind up on some weird ladders when you're doing structural yeah. inspections like you, that. You I, were the more specialized consultant who could do this yeah, job better. Yeah, it would have been me. It would have been me. Yeah. Thank thank you for sending me out there. Um, I figure it'd be very difficult for this guy to get fired from his job, so I'll just say it. Thank you for your service, Scott Specht, founding principal, Specht Architects. <laughs> mm, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I hope your yeah. boss doesn't have like a strong word with you for submitting a thing. Sort of thing. I don't think he has a boss. Well, this is my boss, this is my yeah, joke. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Well, mm. if we if we need a building, we know who to call. In in Austin, Austin Texas, Texas specifically, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I checked. They got a New York office too. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, my thinking is Austin, Texas. We could get you occupy some of that like empty tech office space. Oh, that's um, a good point. Yeah. You know, we're technically a tech company. Uh, we we, we work could, we on could, a computer. We are. We, we a could, tech we could go up the ladder to Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Should are we? Okay. Well. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, I don't know what 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 category we fit in. So when we started our podcast, probably, I was just like, like well, there's not engineering. an engineering. There's no engineering category. It's uh, all standardized. Well, that that means we're we're the top of it. You know, we're, yeah, we're number closest, one. Well, we were like number three or something for like a week or so ago. Ooh, um, yeah, we're gonna get there. Suck that shit right. wired. Yeah, it's a big. <laughs> the the podcast is getting bigger. Um, right. I guess we're, we're closing in on a hundred thousand subscribers. We got to update the um uh little commercial with the new post office box, but other yeah. than that, um, uh, I I was gonna do that yesterday and then didn't do it. I I badly want a hundred thousand subscribers. I want the plaque. Please subscribe I, to the yes, thing. Please please you, please, you've, please you've smash that long. subscribe button and that's hit right. the bell icon. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's what the like YouTubers say, right? For yeah. for your girl. Um, yeah. We have maybe one of these Patreon. days we'll do like. We'll do like SEO or something, you know. Or, Not doing or, or, SEO. Or... I'm tired of looking at those spam emails. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have little shorts on TikTok, you know. Yeah. We've like more, more and more people. Yeah, I'll be wearing the little shorts. More and more people like email us to be like, please, we can help you be even slightly professional. And we look down and we answer no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was safety third. Yes. Shake hands with danger. Our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Yeah, for us, we have a Patreon. You can subscribe yeah. to it. You get yeah, extra subscribe. bonus episodes. You Last too one. can listen about the poop plane. Yeah, yeah people thought plane. it was really funny, apparently. So, uh, yeah, 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 check it out. Uh, and you the next give one... give us $2. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to do the next one. Give us $2. Subscribe to the thing. Uh, bye. Yeah. Auf Wiedersehen.